I said, let me go live now. Give people a chance to uh, get on in here. I hope I'm not staying long today. That's not the plan to stay long today. But I always say that. <laughs> so we'll see. How is it two thumbs up already? I'm just setting up. That's too low. What about right there? That's still too low. <laughs> you guys are supposed to be getting your questions ready. And if you're thirsty, wink, wink, you're supposed to be getting that ready as well, right? Right? Cause I didn't, I didn't know I was trying something new and I'm like, let me see, let me see, let me see. Yeah, I was that close before, huh? Was I that close before you guys? Cause I don't record right here a lot. Right there, right, right here. Right here, I think. We, look, we're gonna work with it right there now. Let me get myself together. Get y'all stuff ready. Get your stuff ready. Um, and I'm getting my stuff ready. I gotta give me a special mug, like all these other people online have. They special, they special mugs. I need to get me one. Have your questions ready? What y'all wanna ask me? What we gonna talk about, honey? What we gonna get into? Y'all hear me get my, my my drink in case I get thirsty? Huh? <laughs> such a lady. I'm such a freaking lady. I didn't expect people to come in that soon. What else am I grabbing for? My juice. My this. I got a new one. Um, we gonna do. I don't know why I feel like it's something missing. I'm showing one person in here. Is that correct? One freaking person. Again, why does it always want to act up on me? I don't know. This is not my best setup. So I'm probably going to have to come in. It's 11. I show one. I show one freaking person. Okay. I'm just giving people a chance to log in. So don't be annoyed, you guys. Because then it avoids me having to kind of repeat myself on certain things. You know. Plug it in. So. And I have put a thing on that. Look at that oil. That's oil for me trying not to be rusty today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I should go up a little. What the heck? Makeup bags all on the floor. I think I should go up a little bit more, right? I think I should go up a little bit more. it right there okay because until i move who that's hot until i move you guys this this setup is i'm all over the place with the setup anyway so how's everyone doing tonight i'm gonna fan with this i'm gonna turn it this way because this is someone's book that has to be shipped out to canada tomorrow i'm taking it directly to the post office so i can make sure that it gets scans on it because if i just throw it in the mailbox i don't get scans to, to track it until it's too late. So that's something I learned. Y'all like my hair? 
This is, if you were in an impromptu live last night, this is what happens when you braid that hair up. Just put two big old braids in it and then it came out like this. It's to kind of tame the hair to keep it from getting so tangled up. And, um, you know, yeah, that's what you do. Should I turn it down? No. Hmm. We have it right there. Okay. So can you just, can you please just say hello just to let me know who all is here in the live today? Please don't be shy. Y'all be wanting me to act a fool and tell all my, my deep dark secrets. <laughs> Tania, Nails, Nails, hi, hey. Hmm, who else we got in here? CW Nail Designs. Hi. Who else? Precious me. Hey, I'm here. Dailies. Hey. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I got a big old foe here. So, I'm trying to save this wig because this is the same wig for my vacation. I feel, I really do feel refreshed from being on vacation. I needed that. Um, I was in the beach. Hey, multi-talented. And, um... When I, one of the islands that we went on, I'm going to put together the video. It's so much footage. I don't even know where to start, but, um, I don't want to make it too long and bore you. So I'm going to put in the best parts. But one day on the beach, I was just so happy. Like I filmed us going through, going through these roads and, you know, I expected to drive. I already knew. I could look at the man. I said, look at that. that Uncle Tommy, he about to drive like a damn bad hell through the jungle. I already knew. <laughs> So my crazy butt, I made sure I sat in the front seat of the little van because it was like a six-row van with no windows or anything. So I, my crazy butt, everybody else sat everywhere. I'm like, I'm sitting right up front, and I had the darn, I had the camera outside the van. So while he's driving, I'm holding on, but I'm holding the, I'm holding the camera outside the van so you can get like a, uh, like zoom, zoom. You see trucks coming towards you and everything. So I, I wanted, I wanted this footage to be really, really good. So I can't wait to put all of this together. Um, yeah, I, I needed it though because I had a lot of times just to sit out on the balcony and on the balcony I just um, had a lot of deep thought. I had a lot of deep thought about where I want to take things with this channel, you know, what things I feel like people need to know. Um, why am I hitting roadblocks with people? Why? Why am I hitting roadblocks with some of you guys? The reason why I say that. Um, it's because I have so many people that say they're ready and they are not pulling the trigger. Hmm. Just like today. I did that on purpose. I was so unprepared and all over the place and didn't have anything on purpose. Why did she do that? Why? Because that's what people do. People ask people to show up for something, to do something, or say they want something and they're not even ready for it. When the opportunity strikes, when the information is put in front of you, a lot of people are not ready. And I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with these people. Like I have a person who has paid for a consultation, refuses to get it. <laughs> I reached out like, why won't you get your consultation? I'm ready. Well, you're ready. It's the one order that constantly sits in my um, on my main page saying unfulfilled. It's this person that won't get this consultation. If you watch this video, you need to get it because I'm about to give you an end date. Well, that's going to expire, honey. It's been months. Come on now. You say you want to do it. So let's pull this trigger. You know, we have the person who won. We have the person who won um, at the, the launch party. That was a free consultation. I've still yet to give that consultation to the tequila. You know, I got all these people that, you know, it's like I've done my parts. I'm always going to do my parts. And I'm like waiting for people to pull the trigger. So I'm like, am I disconnecting? What is it for you guys that you think it is that's stopping people from, there is no excuse now. You got me here. You got people that have information literally sitting there step by step waiting, paid for. What do you think it is with a lot of people why they're not following through on, on, their, on what they say they want? I'll take it if they're not ready. That's what I'm saying. This is why I titled the video, you know, really it was inspired by a meme I saw. And it said, stop praying for things you are not ready for. Stop praying for things you are not um, ready to do the work on. Because you never, what are you going to do if the opportunity is presented to you? Are you not going to take it? It's almost like I'm calling these people's bluff. 
and they're not taking it. So I want these people, I'm going to reach out to these people like, what are you doing? You, you, you have free one-on-one -on -one advice sitting here waiting that is paid for and you won't even take it. I'm hounding you, literally, this is my second and third attempt reaching out to you to ask to help you. And this is why I get a little confused with people because why am I reaching out to people asking them to help them? You know, I think people are overthinking this. <laughs> what do y'all think? Mona, Mona, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mona, Victor, you have a coupon waiting, 30% off. Yep. No, she did not. She has not done it yet. She has not. I'm trying to figure I'm trying to figure out why I have people that are have paid for consultations free and they won't take them. And I'm like, take it, let's do it. And they're like, later, later, later. And I'm like, oh my God, these people have me all gassed up thinking they're ready to do this and pull the trigger. And I'm like, here, I'll do it for free. <laughs> it's very frustrating because we're going into 2020, you guys. What are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and tonight can I ask you all a question I was testing something because I actually posted this video um, I posted this video two days ago what I did was I did a pre-notification because I saw it on someone else's channel they have all their videos lined up and what the topics are going to be and all of that and the date and the time that it's going to go live did you all get any type of notification because I put up that this was going to go live this particular topic was going to go live at 8 30 on the 10th which is today did you all get anything about that Can you let me know? Because I'm like, I wonder. You didn't? Yeah, I had this pre-planned. I had this pre-planned. You said, to me, you said you did and had them remind you. So I sent you a reminder that I was going live at 8.30? Did it? I'm just wondering. Because if not, I'm not going to use it. Okay, so I guess what happens is in the community tab, like in the community tab, you um, you know how you see like things I'll post, like I said, I was thinking about getting a new iPhone and I'm thinking it comes up there. It said yes and it gave you an option to remind you. Okay, because that's what I want to do because I went on Instagram and I told people, I said, hey, somebody said, hey, can you let us know in Instagram land? Look, I'm just such a pig. Um, when you are going to go last, we'll know. So I started doing that. I'm just playing with different things every week to figure out how to alert people, how to alert people. You know, um, eventually what I want to do is I'm looking into the streaming because this is not necessarily streaming. This is just live webcam, I think. And with the streaming, I want you to, I want to be able to press the button and bring you up on the camera so we can talk. You can say, I don't agree with that. I ain't going to do it. And I could be like hollering at you and motivating you and everybody else in the comments could be like, yeah, do it. And you could be on the screen like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And, you know, I just I really want it to be very interactive. So just be patient with me. I'm trying to figure out what works and what does not work. I got it, but I was tied up all weekend. Okay. Okay, so Tania and Tommy, you did. So I was just trying to figure out how that works for you on your end. Yeah. So... Hmm. I'm trying to figure out, can you guys tell me what it is on your end that is stopping you from pulling the trigger? Wishing and not ready. Wishing and not ready. Because I see some people, okay, the community tab is good to use. Good. Um, because I see a lot of people wishing for this, praying for this, and they want this more than anything and opportunities and information is being put in front of them and nobody, I'm not gonna say nobody, a lot of people are not taking it. So can you all like help me to understand the people who are in here? Did you all watch the impromptu live last night? I got that message while I was washing my hair in the shower and I got out the shower and I said, let me, um, yeah, Mona, you, it's still up there. The coupon is still up there. I'm not even going to say the name because somebody might use it. 
it's still there. See, I, I, you see how I know all these little things? That's what I do. I'm a business person. So I'm like, I can, you could tell me your name. I'm like, you got this, 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 this. Oh yeah, I sent that. Check your tracking, check your email. That's just what I do. I multitask. Yes, your coupon is still sitting there. 30% off. I never said the number, but it's 30% off. It's still active. Mm-hmm. And fear of the unknown. So let me tell you all something. Let me put this. I hope I don't show this person's address, but it's, the print is so small. Okay. Let me show you all something. Before I went on vacation, I was up. I didn't really sleep. But I said, I sleep on the boat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a whole bunch of stuff ordered. So I ordered extra books because I was out of books. And I don't like to be on back order and all of this. Unprofessional to me if you can stay ahead of it. So I ordered extra books and all of this. And I said, let me order another smock. You can never have a, too many smocks. So I said, I was going to wait until the next time I go live and I ordered one of my smocks. So do you all want to see this smock? This is my, seriously, this is my first time seeing this smock. And because of the type of smock that it is, I wanted to make sure that it was good, you know, because of what it is. Do you all want to see what it is? I'm opening it for the first time with you. I hope I'm not embarrassed. Do you want to see it? While you all are typing up your thoughts, I'm doing this. So this is the bag that it comes in, right? I know what I ordered, but let's see. <laughs> let's see how it looks. Let's see how it looks. Hold on. Oh God, what I'm going to do, I'm closing off my living room because I'm still unpacking. I'm still unpacking in my living room. So what I'm going to do is turn this this way. Oh my God, my house is a mess y'all, but just keep in mind that I just got back. I just got back from vacation. <laughs> and I had to go right back into doing clients. So let's see. Wow. This came up nicely. Wait. That's why I said I want I had to order this because I wanted to see if it printed nicely. And it did. Oh my god. Eh. And guess what a client gave me um she gave me this idea, a new client. She was like, you should do like, if you can, try to find a way to do like Louis Vuitton and stuff like that. And I, of course, had to reach out to some of my resources and I made it happen, but I never ordered it. And I said, let me make sure that I'm able to do this, you know, because I didn't want the issues of like if somebody placed an order and they're like, we can't print this, but it went right through and it printed right. I'm happy. I'm about to put it on. You all like this. Let's see, I think you got to pull it back through up top. Oh, I made that too tight. That's going to be choking me. <laughs> so I'm happy with this. This came out good. This came out real good. I feel like you could never have enough smocks. Mm, I don't want to mess up my hair because it's still a little wet. The key to this curly hair is don't over manipulate it, especially when it's freshly damp. Freshly damp. The way to keep it like this is just... Don't over manipulate it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It came out good. Okay, push through. Whew. That came out good. I need time to span. Cool. Y'all like that? Hey. Okay. Uh. Okay, so I'm going to come sit my little butt down. <sighs> so, I gave you all time to type. <clears throat> I gave you all time to type. To th no. I gave you all time to type in the comments, so now I'm about to read the comments. Okay. Yep. Look at y'all acting like senior citizens. Mona told my she forget. <laughs> Erica said, I have so much anxiety about failing. Like, like, I don't want to be known as the girl whose nails pop off. <laughs> okay. Fear of the unknown. 
fear of what's next, says precious me. Okay, so let's address those two things. You don't want to be known as the girl whose nails pop off. So what are you doing to make sure that you are not that girl? That's my question. Like, what are you doing to make sure that you're not that girl? Can you answer that for me? Because if that's the case, then you can be known as a person who does whatever. A person who has stanky feet. If you don't want to be known as the person who has stanky feet, you what do you do before you leave the house? You wash your feet. You get what I'm saying? Like, there are things you can do about that. So I don't, I wouldn't let that stop me. You know? So it's just like, I know that's what it is. That fear, fear of failing and not knowing what's next, right? The girl whose nails pop off. Okay, well, let me tell you all one of my fears right now. And it's probably, probably true, but I'm so, at this age, I'm telling you, when you get to be my age, you don't really care. You're like, whatever. I'm probably the girl who's like, oh, she doesn't do a lot of the new designs. I, I Or she does a lot of the same stuff. It's like whatever because I don't even really care about getting all those young girls these days anyway. I'm really just trying to stick with more more um, simplistic, minimalistic type designs. So I might have a certain stigma on me too. Like, oh, she do good nails, but she don't do uh, all the newest, latest stuff. Some of it I do, some of it I don't. I don't even stress myself. If I get it, I get it. And I, if I don't, I don't. If I try and I don't like it, it's like whatever. So it's always going to be something. You get what I'm saying? What if? What if? if? If if I went off what ifs, I wouldn't get anything done ever, 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 ever. I promise you. Okay, so you got to get out of that what if, fear of the unknown, and what if the nails pop off? If the nails pop off, what would you do? You're gonna go and you're gonna ask some people. You're gonna reach out to me. You're gonna get on in these Facebook groups. You're gonna do things like that and start asking questions. Um, those are the type of questions people ask in the Facebook groups. Hey, my nails keep coming off. I'm getting clients, you know, reaching out to me saying the nails are coming off after 36 hours. What should I do? Within three minutes with some of those groups, there's thousands of people in the group, thousands of nail techs, they'll start answering your questions. That's why I said, are you ready to be an entrepreneur? Because an entrepreneur is just a problem solver. Entrepreneurs, we never know from day to day. Here's the thing. We never know from day to day what problems are going to be presented to us and being an entrepreneur is being a professional problem solver right because there is no manual there's no welcome package there is no handbook or anything like that you make the rules you solve the problems you pay the bills and you keep all the money so that's where their critical thinking comes in and i'm not trying to be funny acting or smart mouth or anything i'm saying like for real real talk you have to have major critical thinking skills because I just came off of that off the top of my head. If I'm having problems with something, I was having problems with jail when I first came back to Chicago. I, When I left Chicago, my salon had just started doing jail because jail had just become popular. So I only had my girls do, two girls do jail nails. I was still doing polish when I left, okay? That's how long ago that was. And... So I didn't touch it. I said, I'll let you all do it. And I actually gave them a higher commission. I said, you buy your own stuff and I'll give you a higher commission for doing it. Basically, whenever they did jail, because it was so new, but it was growing, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to invest in it for the salon, I gave them a higher commission. So I didn't touch it until I came back. So when I came back, I had to reach back out to some of my nail tech friends and reach out to them and do a ton of research to figure out what was going on with it. Like I was intimidated by jail and this was just 2016. Okay, so I still did it though. You get what I'm saying? I still did it. What if it peels off? What if, what if, what if? I got all the information. I did all the training and self-training and questioning I could and I went for it. As an entrepreneur, the what ifs, if you're not, if you're too afraid to push through the what ifs, you will not be successful. You got to be not afraid to push through the what ifs. So, and I, and if you watch my channel, I'm not a, I'll also go me, 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 me. So let me tell you about me. 
this is my thing with gel. Um, when I first started back and I started doing the gel, I did have some clients at first that would reach back out to me in two days like, uh, my gel is peeling off. And they sent me pictures. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I'm like, hold on. Let me get back to you. My gel was peeling off. And I'm like, dig, I asked all the questions. I watched all the videos. I reached out to my nail tech friends. And it's like, what do I do? What do I do? I kept educating myself. And then I figured out that I had bought a cheap lamp. It was just not the right lamp. And then the gel was on too thick. See, my mind was programmed around polishing nails. And gel is a different beast from polish. So I'm like, okay. And slowly but surely, and then that's when you start pulling in your relatives and your cousins and, you know, people for free off of Craigslist. Let me practice on you or whatever. And then tell them to report back to you. And then I got over that. So it's like now you can't really get me to polish nobody's nails unless I'm on an agency gig. I don't really use polish unless I'm doing a pedicure or I'm on an agency gig. Other than that, I'm a jail person. I'm a jail person. So that's how you get through that now. You got to be a professional, critical thinking person person you got to be like quick on your toes and thinking of solutions that's why i'm in many facebook groups i may not speak all the time here and there i may speak but i'm in facebook groups i'm always educating myself um i and i never stop learning like every day they say you learn something new every day and so every day i learn something new i'm sure i'm gonna learn something new from you guys here today okay so if you take that mindset that there's and this is the other thing you guys there is always a solution to a problem always 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 there's always a solution i have obstacles that hit me every day and in my old age my old lady age i've learned not to freak out i freak out for a minute my heart start because i get anxiety sometimes i used to have anxiety really bad where i couldn't even drive at one point because i didn't know what it was but um with that i have learned over the years so sit there and I try to think of an instant solution. Hell, hi, 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 Delphia. Um, and I say, okay, I think of all the solutions. And if I can't think of an instant solution, I'll come up with a few ideas. I'll try to tackle those ideas. If, if those ideas don't work, what I do is I shut down. I shut down. But I don't shut down in the way that you think I shut down. I shut, I pray on it, I meditate on it, pray on it, and I shut down to let the universe, to let God bring it to me, and every single time it comes to me in the weirdest way, the solution always comes. It's scary, but I'm telling you, within three days, I always get a solution to whatever problems. Maybe sometimes it may take a week if it's something big, like exactly what to do, okay? I'll give you an example. This book that I just wrote. Um, the 30 day nail technician boot camp challenge, right? Okay, so it's for sale. We know that, right? Whatever. It's for sale. It's selling. But I know that I want to sell it on Amazon because there's nothing on Amazon like it at all. Nowhere near it. Needs to be put out there. I want to put that darn book up on Amazon. Like, oh, I'll just sit up tonight and do it. It's on my list. I'll check that off at the end of the night. See, I'm going me, 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 me. I'm not just always telling you what you need to do and you all are dumb or anything. I'm telling you stuff from experience. So this is recent. Um, I want to upload that darn book, the digital copy up on Amazon. That's why it's not there. I want to upload the digital copy. I said, okay, it ain't uploading. I said, okay, let me see. I went on YouTube and said, you got to find a software there to convert it. Oh, there's my solution. I need to get this software. So I did my research. I found a software that was free. I sat up there and downloaded the software and converted everything. I sat there for like two hours waiting for this book because my book is 100 pages. I waited for two hours for this book to convert. It was almost done. Then it started spinning, saying it's ready. It's about to show me. You guys. At the end of two hours, after two hours of waiting, <laughs> after two hours of waiting for this book to convert over to a Kobe format, which is what you need to upload on Amazon, 
the, I looked at it, it said a thousand and six pages. How was my hundred page book a thousand and six pages? I said, oh my God, something's wrong. I freaked out. My heart started beating fast. I'm like, oh, here we go with the BS. I started scrolling. It's like a, my head is on one page, five words on another page, a paragraph on the next page. It converted my 100-page book to 1,006 pages. I said, oh my God, this is not going to work. I felt defeated because I sat there for two hours after doing all this research thinking I found a solution, and that was not the solution. So then I found another software, went through the same thing, but I felt better because it was converting faster. So it was only like 15 minutes and it converted. I'm like, okay, I bet you this is the one. This one works. Yes, I'll even pay the fee. I'll even upgrade to, to get it done. Same thing, 800 and something pages. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like up for hours at this point trying to get this book converted properly to be on Amazon because Amazon shows up in a Kindle format and that has to be a certain way and it shifts things a little bit. So with my book having so many graphics and charts and stuff, it was not reading, okay? <laughs> Y'all don't understand. I probably was drunk by the end of that, and I was like, I don't understand. What do I do? I, let me tell you. I'm such a lady. By the end of that night, I said, forget it. I ain't selling on Amazon. I'm going to be it. I'm going to be it. I ain't even going to sell Amazon. Fuck it. I'll just, I'll promote myself to death. And it, it just won't be on Amazon because it's just not going to happen. But the back of me and the problem solver in me and, and owning that big salon and all this stuff I've been through, I'm like, I know there's a solution. But because I've been through so much and I know that there's always a solution to a problem, I just knew that I was too frustrated that day to try to figure it out. I knew that. So I knew at that point I just had to step away and go to sleep. That's all I could do. But let me tell you how things work, and it's good to talk to people. It's good to talk to people because I'm going to skip forward, and I'm going to bring the story all in. How many people are on here? Because I still show one person. <laughs> one person and six likes. Um, let me tell you how, how the universe or God works. For me, it's God, okay? But um, I'm in a bowling league. Many of you all may not know I'm in a bowling league. I bowl on, I bowl on Wednesdays. And one of the bowling teams, you know, every week you, you bowl against a different team because you're trying to rank. And so one week, you know, one of the guys we were talking, you know, the guys are very flirtatious. Hi, hi, hi. And he started talking about his mom and his mom is an author. And I was like, I just finished a book da, 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 and, and everything. He's like, I'm going to have to introduce you to her. Little did I know his mother was actually in the league. She just wasn't on his team. So as, as a week or two went back, he was like, this is my mom. And I'm like, hi. So I kind of connected with her, you know, and every time I would see her, I would hug her, you know, and she was just talking to me about her book and, you know, everything. And actually this woman is the original. Oh, this is a whole nother story, you guys. His mother is the person who originally wrote Steve Harvey's Think Like a Man. I said it. His mother is the original author of Steve Harvey's Think Like a Man. She wrote it first. And I didn't believe them when they told me. And I started researching and everything. And it's true. But Steve Harvey didn't write that book. Anyway, I digress. So I had a real author right there in the bowling alley with me. You see how the universe works? You would have never thought that somebody in my bowling league, in the bowling alley, would be my salvation. So... Going back to that night, I had to sit back and um, I had to sit back and say, I'm just not going to, my mind that night was defeated. And I said, I'm just not going to publish on Amazon. F it. And I was tipsy. I'm like, I'm going to bed. And I tumbled my ass on into that bed, defeated. But life, if I would have been, if I would have gave in that, I've always had those moments. Anytime you're trying to do something big, make a major shift in your life or anything like that, you're going to always have those moments. If you fold and cave that easily, you will stay exactly where the hell you are in your comfort zone with nothing to challenge you. If that's what you want and and then, then that's what, that's good for you, then good for you. <laughs> so when I got to bowling that Wednesday, I saw his mom. She was sitting there as normal. 
And I said, hey. She's like, hey, baby. And I'm like, look, and I don't know what to do. Let me tell you something. She said something simple to me. It was so simple. She said, honey, get somebody on Fiverr to, to convert it for you for $5. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me. Do you hear me? You hear me? Y'all hear me over there? You hear me? I'm sitting up here stressing out. I'm sitting up here uploading, downloading all these different apps and everything and stressing out. Fuck it. I'm not going to sell on Amazon. I'm just going to promote myself because this, the lady, she sat there and I went to a little tantrum like a little, like a little, little baby. That I ain't going to be able to do it. I put all this work on it. It just won't convert. And I don't know what to do. And it's just like, it ain't going to let me do it. I'm going to have to rewrite this book in all text because it only takes text. And then she's like, use Fiverr. <laughs> Fiverr is $5. <laughs> do you think every book, she's like, you think every book on Amazon is just all text? And I was like, no. I'll be over here in lane six. <laughs> We got to calm down. If we give it to our fears and our what ifs and what's next and all of that and, and don't even try to try or reach out to some resources to see who can help you or just put it out there that you need help, you won't get the answer. So now, now that I'm back, I said, I'm going to wait till I get back. But I already found a person on Fiverr. Now it's not $5 to convert the book, but it ain't, it, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's a fee that I don't care. I, I'm going to tip the crap out of them if they do it correctly. So that's just an example of what you run into being an entrepreneur. I run it, I still run into stuff all the time. So when I'm going, you better do this, you better do that. Make sure you do this. You hear me? Do that. I still go through these things, okay? You just gotta you just gotta push through it. And then as time goes on, you'll learn how to calm yourself down and you're gonna have to know when to be like, Woosa for today. I'll come back to this tomorrow. That's all being an entrepreneur is. I still get problems all the time. So I'm looking through the comments. <laughs> Lady. And somebody was like, on my community board, they were like, when I was asking about the iPhone, they were like, oh, I don't care about the quality. I'm just here for your unique personality. I'm like, oh, she thinks I'm weird. <laughs> I'm a free spirit. I'm, I'm really... The real definition of a free spirit because once you hit a certain happiness in life or a certain freedom in life, you don't really care. I'm not bound by anyone's uh, rules. I don't have anybody telling me when to get up. And if I do get up, it's because of a client and that's because I set that time there to get up. That's when I want to get up and start working. Once you get a certain level of freedom and I can go on vacations, I don't have to say, let me see if I could put in a time. You know, I really run my life so it makes you become i guess a little quirky and free because i am free i i'm telling you all, i'm trying to help you all to get there but if you're too scared i'm here to help you make it easier i didn't even have that so if, you, if you're too scared at this point i don't know what to tell you i'm here i'm here but let me um re i did actually forget mona mona where you at it's still there but i'm gonna deactivate it you don't appreciate nothing Mona Victor. <laughs> I have so much anxiety about failing. Okay, we covered that fear of the unknown, fear of the what's next. That's why I just gave this um, story. My username still says MUA. So does mine. Chicago nails and makeup. But I still do makeup, believe it or not. I just don't post much makeup because I'm not known for makeup here. And a lot of these young girls are the ones who get makeup a lot to go to the club because they want those YouTube makeup artists that do everybody's face lock off of love and hip hop. And while I could do that, I just, that's not really my, if you got the book, you will know that's not where my brand is. So I don't promote it as much, but my clients who know, I still do makeup jobs. I still do weddings and stuff like that. Usually I'm so with makeup is usually so rush, rush, rush on crunch time. I don't, I, I don't have time to take proper pictures and I don't have the right lighting because Photographing makeup is a whole nother beast. And so usually I'm in a rush. But I still do makeup jobs. Um and I uh even though I'm that I went to school for that and everything, it's just like I like it, but I don't I don't love it like that anymore because it's been the makeup experience has been cheapened. So hmm. 
Anyway, uh, fear of everything, but I just got over it. Mm-hmm, precious me, how you get over it? What we gonna do next? Tell me in the comments what you about to do next then since you just got over it. Yes, Erica said, Erica, when we start, every nail tech pops up. What? Erica, when we start, every nail tech's every nail text nails pop off it's just how when you start yeah it's just like part of it you go through it like i deal with the gel you just got to push through it i had a fear about gel when i first moved back here the more nails you do the better that foundation gets and they longer pop no longer pop off right erica said laugh my ass off i'm so afraid but i just know you got to get over it. you just got to go through it and then you got to get over it you got to go through it you got to problem solve it problem shoot it and you got to get over it tommy said bad past experience no startup revenue sh struggling for I'm so sorry. Str <laughs> struggling for money to get good products out of practice. Startup revenue, struggling for money to get good products and out of practice. Okay, so Tommy, we already know that you already have stuff to start up with. Um, if you want, you should liquidate some of it. Think I don't remember your individual story. I told you I remember everything. Um products that's why i have chicago beauty source i have products on there and i've said it in other videos i'm going to reiterate it if there are products that you need if you want i will make a list I i'm gonna be even more clear i'm gonna be even more clear on this and i think i'm gonna make a whole video about this If there are products that you want and need, make a list. I will make you a bundle package. I haven't said this. This just came to me just now because that's the businesswoman to me. I'll make a bundle package for you. And I'll put your items on the website and you can purchase and you can put it on an afterpay payment. So if you need table and chairs, whatever, whatever you see, give me a bundle list I will put it up there. I'm going to leave it up there for maybe 48 hours, 36 hours, whatever, a couple days. And I will put the things that you need. This is why I created Chicago Beauty Source, you guys. I'm telling you, that's why I'm, I'm like getting frustrated with people. Because if I had the resources and somebody like me around back then, I would be freaking set. But I'm telling you, whatever you need, I'm just slowly putting up stuff because it's hard and a lot of work to put up stuff. I'm trying to get a lot of stuff up for Black Friday. We're going to discuss that too. But if you have a list of things that you need that you don't see on the website, tell me what those things are. I'm going to find those things. I'm going to put it on the website and you can purchase and be on a payment plan up to $1,000. Okay? So if you do $1,000, you're going to pay $250 that day and you're going to pay $250 every two weeks. If you can't pay $250 every two weeks, you work that out with Afterpay, but they do work with you on that, okay? But I'm just saying, like, there are things you need. There, are always a way. there is always a way. That's why the title of this video is Wishing and Not Ready. Wishing and Not Ready. The title should really be Wishing and Having Excuses, okay? I'm just making that clear that I can do that. And anytime, even if it's not a bundle, if it's like, I want this, I saw this, I want to get this, okay? Tell me where it is. I'm going to research it and see if it's something that is cool for me to post. And if I can post it up, I will host it. Meaning I'm hosting that product for you to get it. And you'll put it on Afterpay through Chicago Beauty Source. It's fine. I can do that. I've already put my information up basically, you know, as a business who says this is a legitimate sale for nail techs. So... Not to be mean, I'm just saying, I, I didn't know if I made that clear. I want you all to have the stuff you need. But here's the problem. A lot of people are buying too much design stuff. Buy your basics. You don't need a lot. Files, buffers, stuff like that. You need a uh, some type of table. I'm still working on a uh, desk. I'm going to buy a table. Y'all, because I be too busy. That's what it is. But just, you know, find some things that are affordable. And it doesn't really matter where it is. It, it almost 90% of the time doesn't matter what where you find it. I can find it and um, I can host it on the site. Okay, so I hope that answers that. So that was the first part of it. Money. Tommy said money. Keep typing, you guys. 
Y'all better stop worrying about nails popping off. Okay, so she said no startup revenue, which I told you could do some liquidation. I remember your story. Struggling for money to get good products. I just said something about that and out of practice. You already know what you got to do about that. That's what I'm talking about. So where do we get this thing of people saying they're wishing for this, they want this life, they want this thing, but they're not really, are you really ready for it? Or are we just talking? Are we just talking? Because anything we want, we can make it happen. And I'm the person that's like, so now what? One, two, three, four, five, so now what? Now. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, what? Now what? So now what, Tommy? And, and I'm not going to tell all your business on here, but you, you, I don't even want to, I'm not even entertaining your answers because you are in one of the best positions to get this popping, honey. Right? I've been doing nails for two years. Well, practicing and studying, but I like this, but this is real talk. I'm still scared. That's what it really is with a lot of people. I just got a little space to be able to accept clients in my new place, but I'm scared. That's real talk. Can somebody tell me how many people in here? I still see one person. Here's the thing. People are simply scared. But scared of what? Be a lady like me and then you'll see. What are we scared of exactly? <laughs> Do y'all know that people been going to discount salons getting bumpy, lumpy, half-shaped nails yet that's why you got to be really confident and know how to fake your confidence because if you got to become an actress to a certain degree in the beginning because if you go in there like i don't know what i'm doing i think i said in another video a girl i was she came and she got a one-on-one -on -one with me training and i worked with her on acrylic and everything and i told her a little a few tips about her uh 16 people i told her a few tips about her social media and i went and checked up on her like two months later because i hadn't heard anything from her and she had on her darn instagram profile up and coming up and coming nail tech i'm trying something i said i inbox i said if you don't take that down why are you telling that why why are you showing your cards to the why are you showing your cards to the world you gotta fake it till you make it honey you just keep going and you figure it out. And even if you don't know, you just say, I'll get back to you with that or whatever. What are we scared of exactly? Look at what these people are coming from. Do you see the type of crap? Well, you don't. But the type of stuff that comes sit in my chair and people sending me pictures all day asking me to fix stuff, it's a hot damn mess. So what, well, what are you scared for? You ain't going to do no worse than what they're going to pay them people for. Okay? Okay? And if so, just offer it at dirt cheap prices, just enough to cover your overhead, your, your supplies or whatever. $20 sets. You know, I went over that already. $20, um, $20 my way, $30 your way nails, or something like really cheap where people will still try you. $15 sets my way, $20 your way, or whatever sets. But, you know, just tell people before they sit down with you, like, look, before we start, just understand that I am a practicing nail tech and that my prices reflect that at this time, you know, and I'm going to do the best I can. You know, these are just regular schmackler people. Now, I can say if you was about to do Oprah's nails or something, like, no. But these are just regular people that go sit down in anybody darn chair. If they go sit their butt up in the nail chop shop, yeah, I said it. Go sit up in the chop shop and get nails by people who ain't even licensed. They're practicing on them. Do they? Do you see them having fear? No, they 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 can't wait to keep practicing on you and cutting you up and, and not even disinfecting properly. They don't even care. I'm not saying don't care, but I'm saying like, what are you scared of? Do it. <laughs> just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. It's just like when you when you learn to ride a bike. We were super afraid. I don't know what we thought we was gonna do right off the end of the earth. And, and fall into the ocean? I don't know. The worst thing will happen, you're going to fall down and get a little scrape. Okay, put some Neosporin on and keep going. That's it. We cannot be scared. Sometimes, even if you're scared, you still got to just do it. If you all have kids, I don't even have kids. And that's like the scariest thing in the world for somebody to bust my body wide open. <gasps> but you still had your baby, didn't you? So, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, I'm way behind on these comments. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. 
Okay, so she said that is cute. Yes, I'm happy. This turned out really well and it's very clear, you guys. And it's a couple of variations on it. And before I got, I got other designs too I can get. I just wanted to test it and I never ordered one. I was like, I wonder if my, um, if my vendor will even print this for me. Cause sometimes they'll see stuff like that and be like, we can't do that. But they printed it <laughs> and sent it right on away. When I got back off vacation, that package was sitting there waiting on me. So I was like, okay. And I love this. So, um, and by the way, that's what I'm going to do for Black Friday. Can you all let me know what you think? Um, I was looking at a couple things and researching some things. And I'm like, dang, Black Friday is coming up and I need to come up with a sale. What I think I'm going to do for Black Friday is. I got two. I got one, but I, another one just popped in my head. And it's going to be very limited time. It's going to be like only for like, it's only going to be like for six hours or so or eight hours or so maybe. It's going to be buy one smock, get one half off. <laughs> now this one, let me think for a second. Let me think. Okay. It's going to be buy one smock, get one smock half off. Or it's and it's gonna be get the hard copy or the digital book for forty percent off. Do you want both of them or neither one of them? So buy one get one half on the smock. It's gonna be a variation with the smocks, the book, or buy a smock get the um, mask. Oh, I don't have a mask in here. Buy the smock and get the mask for free. Buy the smock, get the mask for free. Buy one smock. It might be all three. Buy the smock, get get a mask for free. Buy a smock, get a, a second smock, 50% off. Or um, the book is going to be 40% off. 40% off. I might do all three. So that's what it's going to be for Black Friday. But it's not going to be a long time, you guys. It's going to be a minute. <laughs> Let me um quit talking so much and keep reading through these darn comments. Okay, I ended up working weekends at a nail shop, so I get all my fears out. Now I'm impressed with my own progress. Yeah, see what I'm saying? We be in our head too much. We be accusing men of cheating a lot of times. Sometimes they don't be cheating. They just be doing, sitting there picking their nose, they picking their butt, and we like, oh yeah, with another chick. I can't, you know, put his stuff, you know, our man will take us places. It don't need to go. I'm telling you. Um, yes. And, and, and you'll look back a year from now, if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll be like, you won't even think anything of it. Like next, 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 next. I promise you. But if you stay in your mind thinking of all the things, your mind will always take you in a negative space. A lot of times I have a fake hand thing and I do my friends and family nails. Yeah. So keep doing it. Now I want you to do this. Go get you a stranger and start doing strangers. Erica was laughing. Get out that on some real hands and get some more experience. That's the only way because every nail is different. That's what I just said. Yep. Because you're going to have somebody come be like, I want this design and it's going to be the prettiest thing off of Pinterest and they're going to put some booty diggers in front of you. <laughs> they're going to do it to you. They're going to do it to you. better get to pushing them cuticles back as far as they can go. I swear to God. <laughs> And that's when, that's when you give them a disclaimer. Well, keep in mind, that's a picture off the internet and I'm, it's going to be reminiscent of what you see there. <laughs> reminiscent. <laughs> okay, I'm scrolling. <laughs> Amen. What if told you back? It does. Honey, go to nail school and finish going to nail school and finishing with no clients. Why? When you are in nail school, you should already get you some preliminary business cards. For those of you all who are in school, why haven't you ordered your cards yet? You should already have your cards. Marisha, I think, ordered her cards already. You should already have some little cards. 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 And I prefer, I prefer postcards. I prefer postcards because postcards you can put up a picture of your best work 
so I prefer postcards. And I had to go get my chacharrones. The chacharrones are so good, and they are low carb and high protein, and it keeps you from eating potato chips. So I hate to annoy you. But I prefer a postcard, so you can post up at least one picture of your work. I put that in the book, why? Different marketing materials, why I say yay or nay to them. Hold on. I'm so sorry to be annoying, but when I'm sitting up here talking, 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 talking and sipping water, sometimes I need something else in my mouth, like something with some texture. Okay, so order your cards. You're finishing up school. I brought a few people from the school to me. Well, it happens with a lot of them. They ain't going to want to pay the price, but so what? Just still try to bring them with you. You should already be scouting salons already. Scouting salons. Go back and look through the past videos and figure out what things you're supposed to be asking, doing. Take your time and look through the videos. The answers are all there, what you should be doing. And um, get your cards ready. And you should already be practicing on people. Live hands doing full services and get on your timing. Excuse me. And if you can find a salon, ask if you could just come in on Saturdays. And I was like, well, I'm not licensed yet. Just do it. You'll be all right. What can I do to minimize the monomer smell of my house when I'm practicing? Hmm. A couple of things you could do. Number one, I don't even smell it anymore. <laughs> my clients say they don't smell it too. But anyway, I always burn Bath and Body Works candles. Number two, you can always open a window. Number three, they have those window fans that take exhaust out of your house. So you can get one of those window fans and you can move the exhaust out of your house. But as it's getting super cold, you may not want to do that if you're paying your own heating bill. Number four, um, it's, you should always keep your monomer closed. And when you use it, it should not. For me, that monomer shouldn't be open. Mine is open all the time, but really technically it's not supposed to be open more than like 10, 15 minutes. And so you should be working with a lid, a, 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 a canister, a garbage can with a lid. So as soon as you're done with that, you should be putting it in the garbage can or you can find a thick contractor type, thick plastic bag or something. And as soon as you're done with that, you can take that tissue and throw that tissue in there and tie up that bag to keep that scent contained. And then you need to spray down that area with alcohol because it will neutralize that monomer scent. And then at some point, you got to get used to the scent to a certain degree. It's not going to 100% be gone. So I don't even smell it anymore. <laughs> I just really don't. Sometimes I do, but I really don't. Um, hope that answers your question. Okay, so monomer smell in the house. Retracted message from Delphia. Put that message back up there. Erica up here cracking up and stuff. And then you said you would have been hot. I was hot, but the answer came to me. Precious me, Kiki, everybody here. Yep, telling you. See how the answer came to me? Erica, that's a good, good question about the scent. I wonder if she has some tips. My house smells just like a nail salon. I just gave you all a whole bunch of tips. So that little window fan, it's like a double little fan. And you just point it the opposite way to take the scent out your window and keep your monomer contained. You got to keep it contained. And in and, 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 uh, states like North Carolina, it's the state board law that it has, you have to have a garbage can with the lid. So it's not state board law here in Illinois, but certain states such as North Carolina, that is state board law. You'll be fine if state board comes in and your garbages don't have a lid because it helps to contain the scent. People are walking in like, smells like a nail salon. And I'll be like, would you like to be serviced? And, I'll, and then you hand them your postcards. Laughing my butt off. Erica over there crying. She is laughing at everything. Cash out period, I'll give you 10. Yep, smells like a dream come true to me. Yep, yep, yep. I like the challenges that pop up. They are just... New learning opportunities, exactly. You want to become a... How do you think people become seasoned, seasoned professionals? You think I woke up like this? I woke up like this? Negative. <laughs> no. No. No, you're not. 
I, I still make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I'm just not afraid of making mistakes anymore. Answer always comes. I'm just a professional answer finder. And then I know when to go lay my ass down and try to figure out let the answer come to me. That's all. I'm trying to buy my client chair and my chair and desk next week. Okay. If you can get it now, yes. If not, depending on where you live with the desk and the chairs, like I had an order in Puerto Rico. And it was so funny because guess what? I was in Puerto Rico. I was actually in Puerto Rico eating some fungo, and an order came through for Puerto Rico. And I'm like, ugh, she wants a desk. And I already knew before I got back to um, the internet, I said, I'm not going to be able to get this desk to her. I already knew it. They weren't going to ship that desk to her. I had to give her a refund. So as long as you're in the U.S., it's no problem. But I did have an order for a nail desk with a, uh, a, a vent and everything while I was in Puerto Rico. And I'm like, I'm in, how crazy is this? I'm in Puerto Rico right now, eating my fungo, and an order comes through for somebody in Puerto Rico wanting me to ship them a desk. Crazy. I feel bad because stuff like that, bigger items, it's easier in the U.S. It's hard to get stuff shipped. I had somebody in Ireland trying to get me to ship them some chairs, and I researched the crap out of that. I got on the phone with many suppliers. They would not ship. Wherever she was, it was like they didn't want to ship there for some reason. When you start, when I start, a lot of online stores don't want to deal with international orders. I will because I, in my past, previous corporate jobs, I've had to ship all around the world. But it's a whole nother beast shipping things with customs and duties and taxes and tariffs and all this stuff. But I will try. But if I can't do it, then I, I just have to give you a refund. You know, and I had to refund her order, unfortunately. It happens. But I try because I'm a professional uh, problem solver. To get over my fear, God gave me a pressing bill, so it was just go time. So I got a job at Salon, and bam, I have no fear, and I love it. She told me, because I told Precious me earlier, I said, tell me how you going to do that. She told me, and you love it, right? It's done. Look, after you get real super comfortable with that, you're going to get kind of bored with that, and you're going to be trying to figure out, like, what can I do next with this? I promise you, snaps to you, girl. Give it, Give it to me. Boop. Mm. Do it again. Boop. <laughs> Y'all like it when I start acting weird, right? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This is what I want to hear. I want to hear people saying, look, I smashed through my fears. I did it. It's done. And then this time next year, we're going to be having a whole nother conversation on how do you scale this to a whole nother level, honey? Oh, my clients, now we're going to start talking about your product line that you're going to start selling to them and how you're going to get your labels and your packaging and stuff and how you're going to get your suite. And this, but that's, that's level two, honey. But yes, yes, that's what I want to hear. You want this level of freedom where you start acting weird to people. You're going to always be weird to people because you, when you start living in freedom and in your own world, you're no longer inhibited by how people say you should act, what time you should show up, how you should be. Don't say that to them. Don't do that. You relate. You going to the bathroom again? You're going to, once you're in a life where you could do what the hell you want to do, when you want to do, you can say what you want to say. It don't even matter because you control your own money, your own destiny when you wake up and you go to sleep. Huh? It, when you have a certain level of freedom, I'm telling you, you might seem weird to people because you are uninhibited. A lot of people walk around inhibited by jobs by suppressive toxic people when you learn how to control your emotions like i talked about yesterday with people and you're not inhibited by a job because you have financial flexibility and freedom you will start to act weird because you just you will become your organic self that you always in the back of your mind always wanted to be so yes you see you said you see it already you talking cocky girl you already talking cock. You talking about, bam, it's done. See, 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 girl, this time next year, I, I will be pulling you up on this live and we will be motivating people together or up on the stage somewhere. I'm telling you, y'all better get on it. She said, let me read again. So I got a job at a salon and bam, cocky, cocky, precious me. I have no fear and I love it. See that? 
Eric said, yes, bundle packages. Let me know what it is. I'll do it. I'm going to work it out for you. Eric said, oh, my God. Is she in Atlanta? Y'all know I lived in Atlanta for a minute. I'm actually thinking about driving there. See, this thing you can do, I'm going to close my books. My clients already know, you going back to Atlanta, you always in Atlanta. I'm thinking about driving to Atlanta and kicking with my people in Atlanta for the holidays. We just going to shop, kick it, eat, chill, cry, talk shit, pass out on the floor, talking shit. Like, I'm just thinking about doing that because I'm sick of the same old soul food dinner. I don't know. Thinking about it. So I guess God gave me a bigger God gave me a bigger fears hat was more real so I got over my nail fears see over it's over and it's done so now you're gonna perfect that and then we'll work on the next project how do you keep your nail keep your form nails from breaking while practicing form nails can you tell me what you're talking about when you say form nails, please? Funny thing is I have an entire set up at home, but I needed to build clientele. So a shop was the fastest way for me to get out there. Right. And that's why I said there's so many different ways you can go with this. And you have some people out here who don't even realize they may be a mobile technician. That may be their thing. I do a mix of it all, but, um, well, I'm more mobile and then home. I'm mobile home. That's me. I'm 70% home, 30% mobile agency represented. But it's so many different avenues. So for you, you said you wanted to hurry up and get clientele. So you jumped into a salon. Do you pay booth rent or are you on commission? Damn that hair popping. Smell it, girl. You smell it. Mm. Freshly conditioned. When I came back from the trip, but thank you. When I came back from the trip, I was rolling around the sand. I got, I still got sand in my hair. It's, this is a wig that one of my clients did. It's sewn down. And so you can see the line of demarcation back here. And that's because it's now two, two and a half weeks. Well, yeah, two and a half weeks old almost. And of course, my hair is so soft, it falls. My hairstyles always fall back. So I told her to leave the perimeter out, but my braids get soft, so that makes the hairstyle fall back. But this is just a wig I got off of Amazon. If you want this wig, I will get the wig for you. Just let me know. <laughs> but yeah, I love this wig. I've washed it like four times already. And what I did was I deep conditioned it and put some silicone mix on it because silicone... That is a, Lat a Latino conditioner. I love it. It smells so good. And it put really puts the shine on there. And I just let that sit while I was in the shower. Then I combed it. It's combed out like butter. And then you saw last night in my last lab, I just put in two ponytails. And right before I went live, I just took the ponytails out. And I didn't touch it that much. I just took the two ponytails, the two braids down. And I'm letting it organically finish drying. And then I start fingering it, fingering it out fluffy like if you start over manipulating this type of hair that's when it gets fuzzy and stuff but i love this wig it's a 24 inch this is a 24 inch wig and i love it it's gonna i bet you it'll last me two years if you know i take care of it your hair can last a long time i got boxes of hair well one big box box and a half of hair so thank you but this is sewn down i'm having i'm gonna take it down probably in like another two weeks and then i'm just gonna wear it as a regular wig because it is a 13 by 6, 13 by 6 parting space wig. But like I said, you can see where the wig actually starts. So I just tried to play it off. That's why I got it cut off. <laughs> but if I go out tonight, I'm supposed to be going to a biker club set. So it'll be dark in there, right? It'll be okay. Okay. Wait, I'm so sorry. Let me catch up. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm working on a computer desk. Okay. Sitting there cracking up. What are your feelings on purchasing a an existing spa versus starting a new one? Girl. That's a that's I was thinking about. I'm doing thinking about doing I am gonna do a little book on that. Hmm. Existing spa. I'm sorry, I gotta be a little ratchet. <laughs> I'm hungry a little bit. Okay. Hmm. 
there are always spas online on sale on Craigslist. I see them all the time. My thing is, I'm always I would always be leery of buying an existing spa because why are you selling a business if it's lucrative? There is an issue there. And that's why I like shows like um Shark Tank. And then what was that other one? The guy that came on after Shark Tank and he'll like do a deep dive on a business. I love, love, love those type of shows. It teaches you a lot about business. Nobody is selling a cash cow. There's something wrong. And they'll, they can show you the numbers and they can have their accountant pull up fake numbers. But there's something wrong. No one sells anything that's already making money. It's a reason why. Okay. It has to be an extreme circumstance like, oh, my mom was running this, but she passed away. And I live all the way in Denver and I have a family and I have a full-time job and I just don't have time to do this. In that case, I would believe that that person wants to sell that salon. If it's not something like that, I would be leery. And I think that if it's not an extreme situation like that where it makes absolute sense, The Profit, yes, The Profit, that's the show. I love that show. And if that man want to call me, he can call me, okay? Because I like him. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Though. Ain't got money, but he might be cheap. But anyway, like I was saying, if it's not some extreme situation like that, I would be very leery. I would just start my own business from scratch, and you could do stuff on a very, very, very small budget. And I'm actually thinking about making my next, my next little ebook, one of many, which are going to be very cheap. It's going to be like the ten thousand dollars salon, the ten thousand dollars salon, make millions off ten thousand, something like that. I don't know, but yeah. So that's my thing on that. I don't trust those people that are selling businesses. Like, why are you selling it? I don't care. If these numbers are so great, why are you selling it? It doesn't make sense. doesn't. Think about it. You know, trust your, trust your gut. Here, I know I'm in the best position. You are, Tommy. I'm not going to tell all your business. Or do you want me to tell all your business? <laughs> it says 16 people. Where are we now? I love your hair. Thank you, Fuchsia. I said that on my post about salons. I said that I could accept salon client. Wait. Ugh. I said that I could accept clients right now if I really wanted to because salons mess up all the time and do crappy rush work. But I care about my brand. Okay, so here's another little piece of advice. Don't wait until the perfect opportunity. This is something that a lot of people do in life in general. They slurp their drink like a lady. No, for real. <laughs> People always say, when the time is right. When this happens. When my babies graduate. When I lose this weight. When this happens. When that happens, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Even if you got to make mistakes right now. Start, look at it like this. You're figuring out and getting the kinks out now. So when the perfect opportunity is really there, you've already gotten through all the nuances and all the BS and all, you know, you figured out a lot of things. That is a big mistake that people make. People, we cannot assume that we have tomorrow. That little cliche saying is so true. Tomorrow's not promised. Next year's not promised. I might be dead by the end of the year. God forbid. But I'm just saying, like, you got to live for today. Do it today. Do it now. Stop overthinking. Stop making excuses. Because let me tell you what, when a lot of people say, when my babies graduate, when my this happened, when that, 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 that happened, what they're doing is that they're working in fear. They're working in fear and they are giving, they're trying to rationalize their fear. So they're saying, oh, it's, it's, it's okay because I'm really waiting on this. I'm really trying to see if that's going to happen. I'm really trying to do this. But really, the real thing is you just freaking scared and talk and making up BS excuses as to why you can't just get started now. Even if you don't know everything, start now. Figure it out now. Make your bumps now. Okay? That's just real talk. Where's Sharina? She's so, she probably coming here late stumbling in. I'm here late in. She's going to come out in 15 minutes saying, I got to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay wait wait 
And the reputation behind it, basically, I want to run a successful business. Successful. I'm putting a lot of time, money, etc., into this for two years now. And just keep doing it. You're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. That's why this channel is here. If you really need to go in depth and need some really like one-on-one, -on -one, let me call you on your cell phone all day. Let, you, let me let you, here, come in on this meeting on the speakerphone. Get a consultation, you know. Do that. But right now, keep going. Eric says she had a kid. That's why you laughing because you don't bust your body wide open, but you got every excuse in the world why you can't polish a nail. You've done bigger things in your life than I have, Erica. You've done bigger things. I can't do that. I can't. Oh, I can't. I can't do it. Oh, 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 oh. No, I can't do it. That baby be sitting up in me for three years. I ain't ready yet. Mm-mm. That baby be in there drunk, tips. <laughs> You know, you've done bigger things than me in life, honey. Kudos to you. Yes to the Book of Smock thing. Yes, you need that book. It's there. You can get it digitally right now if you wanted to. Stranger, but okay. Hi, I just want to tell you that you look so beautiful and your makeup is superb beautiful. Who? You talking to me? Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> but guess what? I just did all that, right? So YouTube can capture one of those to be my thumbnail and it won't capture none of that. It's gonna capture me doing something like... That's what YouTube gonna capture. It's not gonna capture any of this. It will not, I promise you. YouTube do not like me. YouTube do not like me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Watch what I tell you. And I'm not even going to change the thumbnail right away for a day so you all can see what I'm saying. I'm going to show you all with YouTube capture. didn't capture any of those. Um, Lindy, I think, Lindy, you live in California. It, it, it does not capture any of my cute stuff. It always captures me doing something like this. I promise you. <laughs> right, strangers? In my house is still a fear that I'm working on, but as I build clientele in, at the salon, I'm sure that fear will fly out the window too. Now, I don't know about that because you got to watch all my videos. There's, there's so many subjects. You know, I do people out of my house and new people, I, I still kind of watch them like, what do you say you are? What kind of car you in? Look off the window. Okay. I also posted on my community board, hmm, you could put up a camera, it's a front door, right? If you live alone, you could put some men's boots at your front door to make it like a man lives there. If you have some friends who are police officers, I didn't ever say this, but you could do this too. Go get some cap, no, oh, that's Chicago. Go get some police officer stuff and post it around your house. Okay. And that is why you have the policy no extra people. And that is why I accept cards. People I don't know, if they if a person I accept everything via the app with the credit card on file. If very rarely, maybe once or twice a month, I will take a person off the books. And it's only because they are referral. I just chat on this. But um, only because they are a referral from a client that I've been doing for a long damn time. Oh. Oh. Okay. Listen to me now. I've had people say, I'll pay $20 extra. I'll pay you double. If you could take me at 10 o'clock at night, how you know me again? Oh, well, you got to book through the app. I don't have anything. I don't let money sway me that way now. When it comes to people coming to my house, you got to get on, on the app during regular business hours with the credit card on file. That helps to cut a lot of BS. And you could do the things I said. And if I take someone off the books, which I really rarely ever do, it's got to be a special circumstances because someone, like one of my clients I've been doing for 15 years 
her best friend works crazy weird hours. She's been wanting to come to me for a long time. She said, I'll pay you up front right now. I'll send you the money right now. And she said, you know, X, Y, Z referred. And I, I'm like, oh, okay. I know this client. She's a no BS person. And the way she spelled her name, I knew that she knew her. Even though it's a common name, the way she spelled it, I knew she had to know her because it's not, it's, it's like a name like Kim, but it's spelled like K-H-Y-M. You get what I'm saying? So she had to have known her to say that she referred her because it was like, Oh, I know you know her and I know what type of person she is. If she told you and you saying this, that's why I took her. Otherwise, I'm not, well, I would have not taken her. I'd have been like, here's the link. Have a nice day. Get in where you fit in. You ain't about to chop me up. I've never had any issues though. Okay, facts. I promise this time next year I'm going to be having a way different conversation with you. Yes, if you keep watching these videos and you keep pushing, push through that darn fear, girl. Let's have these stories. Let's laugh at them. Sometimes you got to be able to laugh at yourself, honey. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. That's part of the problem. We have anxiety a lot of times because we're too much of a control freak in our own life. Stop asking and wishing for things you are not ready for because the opportunity will present itself and you will let it slide right through your fingers. Right? That's, that's the purpose of this video. Well said, it's called F you money. Exactly. Hey, come. I'm down for that. I always try to motivate people to be free. I'm a free spirit. And, and it's crazy because I'm becoming freer and freer and freer. And people are like, I don't know how to take her. And then they want to be around it. But they're like, I don't know how to take her. Don't, don't, you better, you better. Like that darn Skittles commercial. You better eat some of these Skittles and so it can come off on you. That's what you want, honey. Taste the rainbow, baby. You better want to taste this rainbow because I'm, I'm, this is what you want. You want to be at what they call Maslow's. Look this up, you guys. Look this up on Google. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. I um, did a paper on this my freshman year, and it's all about self-actualizing and people such as Oprah and all your big people in life. They've self-actualized, but they did some strange and weird things to self-actualize because you want that freedom in life to be your true free self. You'd be surprised the weirdo you turn into if you didn't have all these responsibilities and stressors and people in, in, in down on you. <laughs> okay. I was, wait, did I skip anything? Yeah. Did I skip? I was scared to work from home. Your video on being a full-time nail tech really pushed me. Yeah. This right here, I just got this background pinned up, but really this is my massage table. Let me show you. This is this is really why I do makeup. You can't see it. Well, you can't see that, but that's my makeup station. This is really why I do makeup. And then back there is where I do nails in that back room. That's why I'm trying to buy a house because I am literally bursting out of this apartment. <laughs> it's a two bedroom and it's not enough room at all. At all. When I tell you at all, I don't even have a place to have dinner with my friends and I like to cook. Okay. Nails you make with a form, not a tip. Oh. Let me answer that. Somebody can somebody answer that question because I'm sorry, I don't do nails on forms. I got a little bit of in, input, but I don't really do nails on forms. So you know I gotta use the ladies' room. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, did anybody answer your question? <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So you're talking about the sculpted nails on the tips. Now, I never really got into that. Only time I use that would be I have forms here. And if a person's nail is like weird or deformed or something like that, and it's like there's no way in the world I could put a tip on them and they really want a nail with some length, I will go ahead and put a form on. The form thing is truly an art that you have to practice, okay? Over all these years, that's one thing I never had the patience to get into. And the reason why is because people don't want to pay for it. Because if you're going to go into sculpting nails, that's a great thing. And you can make a lot of money doing it if you can build your craft and build your skill over time. But it takes time to perfect that. And you got to find the right forms that work for you. There are so many different forms out here. Um, what I will tell you, in my little humble opinion, okay, just me, just me, just me. The women who really got that on lock are the women in Europe. Mm -hmm. Those European nail techs, they are the wizards of nail forms. Watch some European channels. Watch Nail Nails, N A I O Nails. Um, and start from there. And I want to say no theory, but she's here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So nail forms, that's something. If you're going to go into doing nail forms, you need to be charged more money. Don't be doing that at regular tip prices because that's sculpture nails. And sculpture nails are always a higher in service, Okay. I would suggest you go watch some of these other channels and it's just really finding the forms. Once you find the forms you like, it's easy breezy from there. The one thing I do like about sculpture tips and forms is when you're working with clear nails and encapsulation. Bravo, monsieur. Bravo, monsieur. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Mundo. Perfect. So clear. That's what I like because you're not dealing with an extra layer of a clear tip. So I suggest you go watch some of the European nail channels because they work a lot with nail forms, nail tips. Also, I don't even tie this thing on really. Also, my, my video is on a delay. Sorry. I'm thinking about getting a new phone. I'm still, I've, I, you know, um, I don't really don't want my bill to go up. I'm very meticulous about my budget, my monthly budget. Facebook is messing with the algorithm of my paid posts. It seems like it doesn't get the attention that it once did before. Hmm, that's a good one. Okay, so here's the thing. Are you using the same posts? Answer that question for me. Are you using the same exact post? And then we're going to go a little deeper into that. I'm going to keep reading. Phenom D said, I do mobile services. Yes, that's an underserved thing. And if you can really brand and tap into that, be consistent with that, before you know it, you'll be overwhelmed. And what you need to do at that point is call me. <laughs> you need to expand. So stick with that. Mm hmm I'm practicing with acrylic right now, not gel. I know there are people who like paper form nails rather than gluing on a tip. Right. And if you know those people and you know those people, wait, I didn't mean to delete your message. It said message deleted by me. Oh, oh, sorry, Delphia. Uh, uh. That's because I'm on this little slippery phone. But um, if you, what was I saying? If you know those people, keep going with that because you should be charging at least $10, 10 to $15 more than what the average price is for that service because it's sculpted, okay? The profits. Me too, binge worthy. Yes, I love the, I haven't seen it in so long, but I love that show. The salon I used to work in, the owner says she may sell it next year. She hates micromanaging. She sold her hair salon for the same reason she realized she'd rather own sweets. Hmm. Okay, that's true. I will never open another salon. 
<laughs> People ask me that all the time. You open another salon? Yeah, I should have known. I don't like that. That's 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 so true. I don't want to be in charge of you, and I don't want my money and my bills depending on you. With your inconsistent ass. <laughs> I, yeah, that's true. Oh, well. To be honest with you, sweets are kind of, I mean, the thing of the future, and I've said this in other videos, salons are kind of phasing out. So, that's kind of true. It's something to think about. See, we're in an age where everyone and a mama is on social media. So everybody is a boss. Everybody named mama's a boss B. I'm sorry for y'all drinking all this, these liquids. It make me like, I love these chocolate. Uh, let's think about this. Okay, so that may be a legit reason to sell. She's tired of micromanaging people because her she has to micromanage people in, over to, in order to cover her overhead, which is the exact reason why I will never open a salon again. In suites, everybody runs their own business. You come, you come, you don't, you don't. I don't even care. I don't care. I gave you the keys. I gave you the space. You do what you do, baby. You better have my money. It better be in that account by the end of the week. If not, I'm changing the locks. <laughs> That's how I would do it. So, I believe that. I believe that person, what they're saying, I believe that's a legitimate reason. Question is, do you want to take over that? What I would do is, like the prophet would say, go in and interview those people. If she won't let you talk to them, then you got a problem. And I don't think that these days people are so much looking into renting a booth. You may get people renting a booth for a moment to test their feet in the water. But... What's happening is everyone, like I said, is a boss. Everybody's a boss B. I'm a boss B. I got Instagram. <laughs> so everybody's their own boss now. So sweets are things are transitioning over to sweets. With that being said, I would have to go into deeper consultation to tell you what to do, depending on what the price point is, because you could take that and tweet that. But yeah, if it's affordable. And it's some long-term people there it might be worth looking into. However, it will need some tweaking to fit the modern-day booth renter. Miss Brown said, Tommy, we want to know what's up. I can't tell that girl business. She got to get permission. Miss Brown's so nosy. Any advice for a 14-year-old aspiring nail tech? Keep doing nails because I started doing nails when I was 12, 8th grade. Yeah, 12. Keep doing nails. Ask your teachers if you could do their nails because if, if you get something wrong, they're going to mark it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for real, yeah, do that. <laughs> I was doing my teachers and stuff in grammar school. The vice principal, principal, everybody nails. Um, Okay, walk around the neighborhood and ask if you could do some of your neighbors. Ask your mom's friends if you can come by and do them. Um, start building your kits. Start doing the people in school. When you get to high school, I didn't work a job like everybody else. I was a nail tech in high school, and I had more money than everybody else. And I had a car when I graduated because I was a nail tech, and I had a job. But I, was, I didn't have a McDonald's job or anything. I was working at Ticketmaster. I don't know if y'all remember Ticketmaster. I think they're still around. I was a Ticketmaster sales agent, and I was a nail tech in high school. I, I never, I had so much money. It was like I had hair and bone chains. It, it is stupid. Keep doing nails, honey. That's my, that's, how you on this live? I thought I put an age parental thing on here. Okay. Keep doing nails. And just keep doing nails. Keep watching this channel if you can. I don't know how you can. But keep learning. By the time you're 22, you can have your own salon with people working for you. I promise you. You should. By the time you're 20, you should have people working for you if you're doing it this young. Because you have tools available to you that I didn't have. So with the tools, you should definitely be a baller, boss B, by the time you're 20. 
you like, oh my God, Tanisha, you said boss B to her. Y'all, come on now, let's get with the times. These people on social media, they, they hear much worse than me saying boss B. Get over it. <clears throat> Y'all crazy, wait. Wait. Go for it. Abby Yard is laughing my fucking ass. I boss my body wide open. You did bust your body. Girl. <laughs> Girl, send me a picture of your baby. That came out of you. Girl. Pose. YouTube ain't gonna catch none of that though. Watch none of it. I'm gonna leave it up there. Y'all come back and look at this video and see what they captured. They're like, that's what they. <laughs> I'm, I promise you. I promise you. I ain't scared of having random people in my house. Drug dealers do it all the time. Not that I would know. Look, I haven't said anything. I'm just saying you can you can allude to different things and the gun laws are different now. Strap up. You can shoot a person as long as you hit them from the front and you will not have to go to jail or go to court or get a lawyer or anything. You just got to make sure you shoot them from the front. So if they trying to get out, be like, hey, hey, just keep saying hey until they turn around, then shoot their ass. Then you get off with it. I'm just saying. Somebody in your house, shoot their ass. Like, just shoot their ass. They shouldn't have been in your house. Somebody came through my friend's front window five months after she bought her house. And um, she had just got her gun and got her FOIA card. He, he was lucky because she would have she would have lit him up. If it was me, I, I don't even care. I would have just had a moment of clarity. And I just would have shot. Like I'm, I probably just would have shot. I'm not even about to talk that much. Like, bow. Then I just would have started going off. Like, bitch, get your ass out of my house. I ain't playing with you. They would have left right there because I would have already shot. I really don't care. Like, I'm telling you, when I tell you about fear, it's like, I deal with that later, but at the end of the day, I'm still alive. And that's how I think about that when it comes to intruders. I don't care what I got to go through. I'm still alive. I'll deal with that other part later. I'll reach out to um, Larry King live, or I'll reach out to Tyler Perry. Somebody going to help me, but I'm just, you know, I'll worry about that later. I'm still alive. What biker club? I don't know. Y'all got me on here so long. I'm surprised. I'm probably supposed to be there right now. Hmm. Now, but for real, what advice do you have for this? I'm in Atlanta, and there's a few girls I went to high school with that are aspiring nail techs. Most of them stopped and gave up, but there are still three to four. What's the advice? They live in, they, I guess, what they call their best life. What advice do you want? Girls who do them, they're always... Making slick comments. Oh, okay, so this is where you want the advice, sorry. Post about people copying them. I don't pay it any mind, but normally it happens. When I post my work, I've even given advice to one of these girls who look me look up to me, but as soon as I relaunch my brand, the weirdness begins. You new to my channel, ain't you? Can somebody tell me how many people up here, please? Um, because, you know, my advice is never going to change on stuff like that. I just said this yesterday in my live, and I'm going to say it again today. Think about it. Think, 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 think. When people start doing stuff like that, that's because they're watching you. You're not watching them, but they're watching you, and that's where the weirdness begins. It's weird because it's like you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's coming from because you're not giving off their energy because your energy is on focusing on your brand and not their brand. But they're focused on your brand, so therefore it's weird to you. Rewind that if you needed to understand. Therefore, my answer to that is do nothing. My answer to everybody up until this point is do nothing. To Marisha D has been do nothing. To the lady yesterday, do nothing. Do nothing. Do nothing. Understand that what you're doing is arousing people. It is gathering attention, meaning that you're doing something that is stirring people. It's causing a stir. No, there's nothing to do. Keep doing what you do because it's weird for you because you don't know where it's coming from because that is not your intention. You're not copying off of them. You're doing the best things you can do, but it's causing a stir. It's arousing people over there, meaning that you're doing something that's, if it's causing a stir with them, 
It's causing a stir with others and they know this and that's where the weirdness comes in. Am I wrapping this around you correctly? This is where we got to wrap our mind around. Our own mind is the own. Why do you feel like you need to do something? Why do you feel like you need to do something? Why is there something to do? Are they your payment processor? Are they the people who put the money in your bank account? Are they? Why is there a need to do something? Only thing there is, is there is a need to understand that you are causing a stir. You are causing people to be flustered. You are causing people to be bothered, which means you're doing something right. And that's all there is to know. Let's move on to the next comment. And that's always going to be my answer to people. Because like I said yesterday in my last live, I have a person, as soon as I put up videos now, I'm starting to get a thumbs down instantly. Which tells me most people will be upset. But that told me that I'm causing a stir. I'm bothering somebody so motherfucking hard that they the first people to click on my video so they can hurry up and thumbs down it. Because I'm causing a stir within them. I'm, and I'm evoking emotions out of them. When you evoke emotions out of people, that's because you're doing something emotion, evocation worthy. So, know you're doing a good thing. Cat Williams said it the best a long time ago. You better make sure if you got 12 haters this year, you want to have 13 the next year. If you, your hater list go down, then that means you ain't on top of your shit. Plain, boring, blah people get no attention. You get attention because it's something worth paying attention to. Look at it that way. There's nothing to do. You keep doing you. You wish them the best, and you keep doing you. They too focused on you to even explode. So while they're so focused on you, they can just watch you do what you do. Just because you do an ombre and they do an ombre, duh. Ombre is in right now. What the hell? You know what I'm saying? You do a blue ombre, I do a blue ombre. Both of our clients probably brought in the same stupid ass Pinterest picture off of ombre that just happens to be trending right now. So that's why we're both doing blue ombres this week. There's no need to go through all of that. If they're not your payment processor, if they're not Chase, if they're not Quick Pay, if they're not Cash App, who cares? Okay, you either get on board or you get on or you watch from afar. That's what you do. You do nothing. Understand what I just said. Rewind if you need to. Okay, so let's keep going. <laughs> Y'all don't, this, I'm telling you, I got to think about that. Because I've been going through that my whole life with people trying to say stuff and backhand and even fake friends like... There's nothing to do. It actually, these days, it makes me want to glow up even more. Hello. Good morning. Are you woke? I just woke up. Oh, you all are going on break? Oh, you better hurry up from that bathroom. I'm sitting here. I'm just waking up. I'm fixing me some cinnamon toast crunch, thinking what I want to do today. I think I want to go on a shopping spree. I mess with you. Don't, don't fuck with me. I will mess with you. There's nothing to do. You keep doing you. It's obviously working. I'm sorry to keep cursing. No, I'm not. I am for the 14-year-old. No, I'm not. I know you heard curse words, girl. Don't curse, though. Just focus on your brand. <sighs> Comments. What time is it? I'm supposed to be at this party soon. You did bust your body wide open for a baby, and y'all scared to polish a nail. Y'all crazy. Think about what y'all saying to me. So that's my answer on that. Do nothing. I guess that's what I'm asking is like, how do you go about ignoring these motherfuckers? You answered your own question. Ignoring these motherfuckers. You answered it. You already know. Fuchsia said you're right. I follow nail nails. Yes, I told you. Delphia said, thanks for the advice. Hi, Pat. Encore has the best nail forms, corners of pre-cut. Try Encore then. Encore is on it. Encore is posting 24-7. They be on it. Okay. Ms. Brown, okay. QT said, yes, using the same post at times. Okay. There you go. So, okay. I need to do a, a book about this. From all of my hard work and research. Let's digress. And let's go back to what she said. She said that she feels like, I think I'm saying this correctly, you feel like you're wasting money or losing money on your ads because you're not getting the same results or whatever. And that's why I had to think about it. And my question to you was, are you using the same ad? I 
I wanted to see your answer to that before I gave my answer. Somebody said they can't stand me and they love me. That's how a lot of people feel about me. Don't be mad. <laughs> Facebook is messing with the algorithm of my paid post. Seems like it doesn't get the attention that it once did before. And I asked her, are you using the same post over and over? I want to see the answer. Her answer came back. She said yes. most of the time okay so what I need you to do and for anyone who wants to spend money on Facebook ads is that Facebook ads first of all is an entirely different beast okay it's a whole different beast it I've done months and months and months of studying I will be honest with you I learned a lot about Facebook when I was out uber driving when I was trying to build my clientele what I would do while I was in between rides and I was sitting in the airport lot waiting for my next call because those were a little bit of a wait sometimes. I would watch videos on, that's one of the things I used to watch, videos on Facebook algorithms. It's a whole nother beast and now you're dealing with a pixel. I don't know if you know about Facebook pixels. It's the brain. That's a whole nother video. The reason why you are not getting the payoff that you did not get in a nutshell is because it has shown your ad to everyone at least 1.01 times already, meaning that everyone who can watch your ad has already seen your ad and it's just not going to keep beating the same dead horse. So what you need to do is you need to go in and refresh your ad. You need to start a new campaign and I usually charge people for this advice. You need to go in and start a new campaign with uh, new content and new tags. Also, when you run Facebook ads specifically, you are supposed to have it attached to a pixel number. So you can go back and look at the analytics of it to understand how your ad performed so you can refine your next ad campaign. And that is a whole nother video. I cannot go into all of that today, but that is why you notice that you are not getting the same payoff because you have exhausted that. And I don't know, you should be able to go in and look at your analytics to see how it performed and where it performed the best and your next new campaign. You should bet, place your bets down like if you're at a gambling table at a casino. You should double down your bets and refine your search audience. Also, you should be creating a mirror audience and possibly poten potentially, depending on what you're offering, you're offering nail services. Um, yeah, I would have to sit down and think about that. But basically, it's exhausted it. So you need to go in and probably refine it. But if you have a face, you should... Facebook is a whole different beast. You could actually become a millionaire off of Facebook if you understood it all the way. And I'm still learning Facebook. I've been studying Facebook for two years. And it's a whole other beast. But basically, Facebook has exhausted that, camp, that ad. You need to refresh it and refine it. You need to refine the target audience. That's that's pretty much what I can say about that. Um, thanks for the advice. No problem. Hi, hi. Da, da. Did you see the cel did you see the celebrity complaining about two hundred French set? She had mobile services. No. Did you see the celebrity complaining about two hundred French? No. No. I didn't. I don't know anything about that. QT731, yeah, because girl, you've been around for a minute. I'm giving y'all snippets, but I need you all to get this foundation down. You need the book. Yes, you need the book of ASAP. I'm, I'm not going to even force nobody. It's sales. And like I said, I already ordered extra books before I left because they were. I knew they were going to sell out while I was gone. I got more sitting there. I got to get one out to Canada. And they're ordering this book in Canada. I don't know what's going on with Canada, but people in Canada are ordering this book, honey. Um... <laughs> I'm taking it directly to the post office because I need to have direct tracking on Canada because shipping into Canada can be tricky. Um, their customs is funny acting. So I'm not going to put it in the mailbox. 
So if you are watching this video and you order from Canada, know that I'm taking your stuff directly to the post office because I need a direct scan from the beginning to end to track your order. Okay, I know the staff. She is offering to sell to them, but she asked me if I wanted to buy first and currently a commission-based nail salon. Commission-based nail salon. Okay, so I had to think about that. I had a commission-based nail salon, but times have changed. Um, I'm not trying to be funny. You need to get a consultation with me. That's, that's not a conversation I want to go into online. That's not a simple... So a lot of things need to be done there to see if it's worth the investment. And it needs to be done on a consultation basis. So if you're really interested, you can go on the website and get an initial consultation. I can kind of frame things out for you. And if you want me to help be in the process of it when you're ready or to assess if it's something you want to do, then I can help. But that definitely needs a consultation because this woman is selling for a reason. These people are basically employees, but on 1099 status. So... Something needs to be done because times are changing. So if you want to talk different, I mean, deeper on that, let me know. Um, you can reach me on Chicago Beauty Source. Okay? You remind me of Tiffany Haddish. Uh-uh. I like her. But I think that she needs to come out of that comfortable ratchetness. You know, like, I think she has more in her. I think she has more in her than what she's showing. And that's not going to get her super far for super long. Tommy, Miss Brown was being nosy as hell trying to get all up in your business. She said, Tommy said, oh, I was cleaning while listening and missed your question. I was originally at an upscale salon, had a bad experience. So I can't say no more than she would say. Y'all two might want to DM each other. You know, some of my friends that I have to this very day, like they've been to my house in Atlanta. And I've been to their house in different states. We met on YouTube. Seriously. But as far as the mobile girl, it took hella work to have a, a comprehensive kit. But a removal overlay gel polish for $120. Wait, I got to read that again. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Such a lady. What time is it? Charge whatever you can get away with, honey. As long as your brand, you can charge whatever you want to charge. You know, you ever watch these TV shows where people are charging? I saw some bull crap on um. Why well, say bull crap? It's bullshit. On cable, they was charging like eleven hundred dollars for a steak because it was covered in twenty four karat gold. You want to eat a twenty four karat gold steak? If you brand anything properly, people will buy into it. Because y'all got to, man, I used to say this all the time. Everybody ain't broke. Stop running your business trying to cater to broke-ass people. If you want to get that money shmoney in your hand, baby, step your brand all the way up. Keep inching it up to see who it catered to. Once you master that, inch it up some more. See who can cater to. Inch it up some more. See who can take can, 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 see who it caters to because right now i'm out of my apartment this is an older dated apartment but trust and believe honey if i was in atlanta with all the places and beautiful spaces they got there i would be in a whole different environment chicago a little dated okay but if i was in atlanta it's loft spaces and business suites everywhere i'll trust and believe my prices would be higher and my environment would be way more chic i'm going with what people can afford here and trust me, I'm pushing it at the higher end. But because I know that the quality of my work will withstand, I do it. So, whatever you want to charge, honey, get your branding plan together and you can get it. Just think about what those people are willing to spend money on. It's just that simple. Ms. Brown said, you give the best advice how to get away with murder. Shoot them from the front. Call a name. Hey, hey, you, you, you. 
They in your house now. Just try to get them to turn around. Shoot their ass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You a part of PETA. Don't shoot the animals because that's an animal that's in my house. You're going to you be dead. It left me uncertain if I wanted to do still do this. I was holding back because I didn't want to wait. Because I didn't want anyone else to get discouraged. Let me read this again. This emotional post. Let's turn on the music. Turn on the lights. It left me uncertain if I wanted to still do this. I was holding back because I didn't want anyone else to get discouraged. Tommy, stop playing with me. Tommy, you still want to do this because you in every live? You're commenting on everything? Tommy, stop playing with me. Tommy, I know you got a corporate job. You forgot I had a corporate job. I was making six figures. That money don't even mean nothing no more. I'm, I'm so much happier. I still make the money. <laughs> Listen, I know where you are in your mind. Here's the word. If, if this, if my, maybe it's my phone, but if I could write a word across the screen right now, the word would be lazy as hell. Lazy as hell. Yeah, Tommy, I'm talking to you. Lazy. Y'all lazy. Let me tell you what it is. Y'all too comfortable. It ain't impossible. Y'all just too, y'all too comfortable. Y'all too comfortable. Too comfortable. I will snatch off this motherfucking wig, take off all this makeup, go grab my stun gun, and um, grab me some snacks, a can of sardines. Um, These, oh my God, when I'm out Ubering, this right here keeps your stomach real full of chacharrones. I will go grab all that in a bottle of water and I will get out there and I will drive. I will I will drop people off and take them where they got to go, honey, and still make the same income I was making in corporate America. Because I don't care about being uncomfortable. You see, I'm glammed up and everybody like, your hair is so pretty. I can get this cute. And I can grind it out and look like a, a damn lesbian woman. Hardcore. I can do either one. Because if I want something, I make it happen. And I will do either one with just as much tenacity. As much shit as I'm sitting up here talking right now in front of this camera, I will be just as hardcore. And you might, if you look back to some of my first videos or maybe, where did I record some of them? Maybe it wasn't here, but I used to record, maybe it's on my old channel. I used to be like in my car with a skull cap on, no hair, braids sticking out. Like you, you would have swear you would have thought I was a lesbian woman. I don't care. I like looking hardcore when I'm doing Uber. So they don't try to rape me or nothing. <laughs> I will do either one. And that's why I listen to all. I keep telling you all like I'm trying to show you all both extremes on both ends. Okay. 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 You gotta go through it. Ty, what was his name? Tyler Perry said he lived in his car. Even after two failed shows and he was living in his car. Nas, y'all know the rapper, Nas. Y'all, I don't know if how many of you all watched the show. The show um, on BET called Ink, Paper, Scissors. I worked at that salon while they were taping. I wasn't part of the crew, but I was there. And Nas is barber. Marcus Garvey, I think this is the name. I know that's the name of a, a famous poet, but there's also a guy named Marcus Garvey. I want to say his last name is Garvey. He's Nas's barber. He's Nas's barber to this very day. Nas is barber, and I shared a space. And he used to have all the celebrities and all the NBA players and stuff coming in. But people think he got this nice-ass crocodile chair. He got steamers and all these rolls of uh, cologne and stuff for his clients. He was homeless. He was sleeping on people's couches before he made it like that when he moved to Atlanta. Y'all ain't willing to get down in the trenches. If you're not willing to get down in the trenches, maybe this is not for you because everybody's journey not going to be smooth. You ain't got rich parents or something like that. You're going to have to get down in the damn trenches to make your dreams happen, okay? I keep telling y'all, I know people. And the story is not pretty. Y'all want to hear a pretty story? I think y'all keep watching my videos, waiting for some pretty-ass loophole. Ain't no pretty-ass loophole. Okay? 
I go, I can go right now. If y'all really, really, if I really had a camera crew, I'll be like, let me break down for you. I will take this damn hair and put in a bun. I will put on skull cap, take all this damn makeup off, take off these earrings, go put on my ran over ass bug boots and, a, and my army jacket. And I will turn on my Uber app and go pick up people. I sure the hell will. If you're not willing to do that, I don't know what you, I mean, like, if, if, if it's a money thing, that's what you might have to do. Like, and a lot of my clients do Instacart. If you're scared to do the Uber thing, do Instacart. Go drop off groceries. They make just as much. But if you're too, you know, if you're too fancy, too frilly to do all that, then you're probably, you probably going to have a really hard time transferring over into entrepreneurship because sometimes you got to get down the trenches until your dreams take off. My dreams still ain't taking off. I'm just saying, like... I don't know what y'all want me to say. I don't have no fancy answer. I don't. Seventeen people. Okay, sorry you went through that. Who went through that? Who? Who? Sorry, who went through that? It wasn't that bad. I, I got the grind in me. I be enjoying myself because, see, I learned how to take, like I told you, I'm a professional problem solver. So, <sighs> Ubering ain't that bad for me because I'm a night owl. I like to drive a night. It's much easier. I still will get out of Uber if I need to do, do something extra. If I want to pay down one of my credit cards or I'm going on an extra trip, I don't want some extra spending money, I'm going to go make an extra 200 300 this weekend. I'll still go do it. I don't care. I don't front like I'm balling. I'm not there yet. I'm still grinding. Um... I have it sometimes, but sometimes if I have to, if I want some extra, I go out and get extra. Um, if I want to pay extra on my credit card bill, I go out and get it. If I don't have anything else to do, that's just it's just instilled in me. Okay, so it's not even the thing I went through because Uber driving for me is I'm not scary like that. I'm not. I'm from Chicago, you know. We I'm, I'm used to these streets. Like I grew up in not the best neighborhood. Like people say, I grew up in Inglewood. I've been I've been on both sides of the tracks. I've been I went to the Magnet High School, but I grew up in a bad neighborhood. Going to the Magnet High School, so I guess I have both. I have experience on both sides. So my fear and then my faith. I talked yesterday. If you look at my live from yesterday, I did like this with the faces. I know how to wear both faces, and I'm I'm, I'm I know when to put one on and when to take one off. So, um, man, I don't care. Plus, I meet great people doing Uber. Um, and in between, I sit up and catch up on my shows when I'm waiting on a call. I call people. I sit down and watch YouTube videos. So for me, it's not this thing like I'm homeless in a dumpster. No, I'm sitting in my damn brand new car waiting for somebody else to bring me some money to drive somewhere. I'm about to go make another $20 for a 15 minute ride. Like it's all in how you look at things. So if you're not willing to, and that's not even getting down in the trenches. Like I said, um, Nas is barber, Marcus. He makes a lot of money now, like over 300 G's a year or so. But he was, he told me he slept on people's couches in Atlanta. And I've heard that story so many times, you know, in Atlanta from people who are big now, but nobody wants to hear the struggle. Nobody wants to hear that part. Everybody just want to move to Atlanta and become a big star. <laughs> did you see all the guys? Wait, did you see the guys? Wait, did you guys... Tanisha, slow down. You done got worked up. Did you guys... Hold on, I'm trying to scroll over. Did you guys see all the stuff going on with Instagram? No. They're about to take away the likes. What? People are saying it's because Instagram is getting money. They want you to do pay ads through them. Instead of getting sponsors because of how many likes you get. What do you think about that? What do you all think about it? Hold on, let me run to the ladies' room. Y'all know that when the, the water runs through me. That's
didn't want to take away the likes. Well. <sighs> it's all about money. So the first thing they do is, it's a marketing thing. First thing you do is you get people excited about it. You make it where it's accessible to everyone. It's easy, it's accessible, and then you pull back a little bit. You get people addicted to it, and then you pull back. You show proof. You show social proof, meaning that other you have others talking about it. You have proof from others. That's what social proof means. And from a marketing standpoint, and then you pull back and you start charging people for it because now you have them addicted. So I can believe that that's where things are going to happen nowadays. Um, yeah, it's, it's business. It's the cost of doing business. Everybody, that's why um, the person who wants to buy the salon, whether people are on commission, you got to think about where times are going before you buy into an old business because that's what you're doing. You're buying into an old business. And the problem is that person is frustrated with that old business. They're tired of being mama bear to all those employees with the old business structure. And they don't feel like revamping. And so the question becomes, are you ready to revamp and catch up with the new times? So, yeah. Instead of getting sponsors because of how many likes you have, you get what do you think about that? That's what I just said about it. Times are changing, and that that's why I said the person who's thinking about buying, you really might want to buy a consultation. So we could discuss further. QT said thanks. Thank you. Jabril has made a mint on Facebook ads. If you understand Facebook ads, it actually brings money right to you. I was just approved for a business loan. And that's exactly what I plan to do with my business loan. Marketing on Facebook. <laughs> they, they, Facebook is such a beast. You tell them what you're doing, they will bring the money right to you. Summer Walker was charged $200 from mobile tech. The tech says she was 45 minutes away from her. She wanted to get jail, nails, etc. Summer Walker was charged $200 from a mobile tech. The tech says she was 45 minutes from her and she wanted long jail nails. Erica Trey, M-U-A. Such a lady, Amy. You must be new to my channel. What's the problem? <laughs> Somebody 45 minutes away from you wants you to come to their house, wants you to pack up your stuff, get in your car, spend your gas, go through tolls, whatever, and come to their house, find a place to set up, unpack, do their nails, pack back up, drive back. 45 minutes, that's an hour and a half already in travel, plus tolls and everything, plus tap and unpack again for $200. What's the problem? But long gel nails. First of all, gel costs more money than regular acrylic. Gel costs more. There should be a travel fee. And anything outside your normal parameter should be an additional fee. What's the problem? Y'all better learn how to charge in your business. A lot of y'all got an expensive hobby. You're not really making money. What's the problem? Now, I ain't going to lie to you. A person that was 45 minutes away from me for a long jail set of nails, it probably wouldn't be 200, but it would be very close. You want to save some money, you need to come to me. Because not only does it cost me 45 minutes each way to get to you, that's an hour and a half out of my books just in travel. We're not, you got to watch all my videos. Because you need to understand the cost of doing business. The cost of doing business includes the setup, the breakdown, Getting there, coming back at their house, leaving their house, coming back home, all that. You got to calculate all of that in your day, your work day. And you should break that down into your hourly pay. And then that helps you come up with how much you should be charging in that Monday. Okay? So I don't really feel that bad about it. Now, well, while I may not charge 200 we don't know the exact details of that. It could have been some stonework or something involved, you know, different things like that. But it's not unheard of. I don't really, I don't even leave my house for under 100 
And I don't suggest any of you all do either unless you're very, very, very new. And then even at that point, it should be no less than $60 you're leaving your house for. Maybe $50 if you run out of school. I don't leave my house for $100. You got to at least spend $100 for me to leave my house. But now I'm decent. I just want to tell you this. Uh, you convinced me to try D&D. &D. Girl, I'm in love. Yes. D&D &D is a great gel system. It comes with the gel and the polish. It's very decent quality. I have no problems with it. Um, it's cheap. You can get the set for $7 or $8 depending on where you are. And if it's really on sale, it might be $5 for the set, you know. And it's great for a person who does acrylic all day because if you try to buy OPI polish, you're going to spend a ton of money. If you do, if you do all acrylics all day, don't be buying a whole bunch of OPI polish. OPI polish is good for natural nails because it's expensive. You all got to learn how to calculate the cost of goods, the cost of doing business. If you're doing a lot of acrylic, you need to be buying a, a D and D or something. I'm just saying, but you know, Hey, whatever works for you, you must be rich. Mm hmm. So yes, D&D &D is fine. Only problem, I'm going to keep saying with D&D &D and D&C is that they color selection. A lot of those colors are dupes, so you got to watch it. And they need to expand their color selection. That's the only problem I have with D&D &D and D&C. That's the only problem. I, every video, I'm going to say the same damn thing. But I definitely have a lot of it. And I have OPI and I have Morgan Taylor whatever because I do agency work and when I go out with the agencies and do the more exclusive crowd they want to see brands so that's why I have those brands and some colors you just can't get but through them but other than that for the most part I have D&D &D and D&C and I need to write that down I'm actually reaching out to D&D &D. how do you guys feel about this because I I'm about to go write it down right now hold on I always have a notepad or a dry erase board around me and I need to write this down. So my list. How do you guys feel about this? Write some of this sheet of paper. I'm glad you said that because D and D and D and C. I'm reaching out to them to ask if I can offer their entire collection on my site so we can finance it. So as a nail tech, you'll be able to have all the polishes and all the gels on your wall instantly, a whole collection. What do you all think about that? Because that was something that popped in my head. I'm going to reach directly out to the manufacturer to ask them if I, I just want to get permission. I could do it, but I want to see if they have a way for me to do that. Like it'll be like entire collection or, you know, whatever, because I know how it breaks down. I'm going to see if I can get authorization. I'm going to reach out. That's on my list. Okay. That deal will be available everywhere. It's just that shipping it to Canada, I sometimes I have to add on a little bit of extra cost because the duties and stuff, like even shipping, shipping this book, it's a $10 extra cost to ship into Canada because it's more expensive. And believe it or not, to ship this book right here into Canada to someone, let me cover their address and everything, to ship into Canada, that's the, um, this is the customs declaration on this side right here. To ship into Canada, I'm not making no money off of you. I charge ten dollars to ship that book into Canada. Guess how much it charge? Guess how much it cost me to ship this book? Nine fifty. And guess how much that shipper cost me? Like seventy five cents. So I actually lose a quarter. So trust me, I'm not making no money shipping it to Canada. Canada is funny acting. So it is a ten dollar additional charge. So shipping it to Canada should be no problem. But depending on what it is, it may be an additional cost. Canada has become very funny in their customs. Um. Okay. Yes. So I'm, I've am i been thinking about that. It's funny you say that because I believe that the, the starting nail tech should, and I, even on my no chips and stuff, I use D&D, D&C, and no chipping. A month later, no chipping. Maybe one nail may have chipped really bad, but that's it. It's a good, it's good to me. I actually love my current job and I don't want to let it go, but I have to admit, I do love nails. Do both. You've said that before. 
I be messing with you, but I know you like your job too. So do both. You got the stuff to do both. I listen to people. Do both. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me get this straight. I'm not going to shame anyone who doesn't want to do this full, full, full time. Because like I said, everyone has a different journey on this earth. But I'm not buying what you're saying about the financial part. Because you got it. You just got to sit down and think about it. You already have the tools. You need to turn it into money. Okay. I sleep in my shop. No car, no crib. I invested it all. Yeah. Hey, everybody, let's throw Phnom D some love and sprinkles. She said, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm just seeing this. Let's read this again. Phnom D said, I sleep in my shop. No car, no crib. I invested it all. Girl. Don't you even worry. You're doing it. And you have way more tools than I have. You're doing it. You got clients? You said you already got your own shop. Tell me some more details about your shop because you say you're sleeping in there. Tell me some more details about how many people you got in there. Do you charge booth rent? Do you charge uh, commission? Like, are you paying commission? What are you doing? You invested all. You say you're sleeping in your car. Um, what are you doing? How is business doing right now? I love that. I ain't saying everybody got to go to that extreme, but she's all in. She said, I do everything myself for my business. I, I lost everything last year. It was just time to just do it. How large is your salon? Miss Brown said live yesterday was good as hell. Look, I told you I was in the shower washing my hair and that well, just hit me. So as soon as I got out of the shower, I was supposed to go out. And I'm like, no, I got to record this. And it's about toxic people and how they hold you back. And you got to learn how to recast people in your life, giving them roles they don't deserve. Just because a person got a title in your life don't mean they deserve that role. That was just some blood. That's just some blood stuff. And that was beyond your control, honey. That will mess your whole life up. I told y'all about my father and my grandmother. I started watching it, then I noticed she was on live tonight and came on here, so I have to finish when this is done. Yeah, watch that. Progression takes sacrifice. I had to start taking my craft seriously. Mm-hmm. A lot of people see the fun part of this, and see how she said she in her shop, no car, no nothing. She's sleeping in her shop. This girl going to be on stage with me. I'm putting this out there. She's going to be on stage with me in the next... Now, D, stay in touch with me. We're going to be on stage together with a testimony in 36 months. 36 months. We're going to be on stage together. Don't worry about it. We ain't going to think too hard on that. We'll look back on this video. What kind of water is that? Curly Crew said. It's water that you can't afford to drink. Click off! Erica said, well, I ain't say it was a problem left my ass off. I get it. <laughs> Heck yeah, I need it. I hate having a bad end of Okay. Can we have that deal in Canada? Yeah, it'll be for everyone. It's just certain things like tables and chairs and stuff. It gets kind of tricky. Delivering it to Canada might be a little easier. But like I said, I was in Puerto Rico last week and somebody ordered well. I was in Puerto Rico and I'm like, I'm probably down like 20 minutes away from you and I can't even get this table to you. I must, none of my suppliers would do it. I don't know why, but tables and chairs is weird trying to ship it to certain places. <sighs> oh, wait. Mm. Somebody said they bought the book. If I'm doing a whole nother video about that too, because you guys have bought this book and it's been like quiet chirps. Y'all, I didn't write this book just to be selling something. This is real stuff you're supposed to be doing. And I want to hear back from you all. And I'm, mm, I'm going to start putting people on the spot. I'm not bad at just to make money. I am I want to see some success stories. Okay? 
Nils now said, I know I bought one. Excuse me, Phenom D. You're the bomb, girl. It's all going to be so worth it in the end. You're going to look back and be like, wow, I did that. I told you, I already said, 36 months, we're going to be on stage together somewhere. So stay in touch. Stay on these lives. We're going to come together on stage somewhere. I'm going to have a whole production out of it. You watching. We're going to bring people to tears. And they're going to be like, oh, I want to do it now. We're going to be like, oh, you should have joined in. You should have joined in um, in 2019. We was trying to get you in on it. <laughs> hmm. Nails Nail said, I paid 95 dollars $95, Canadian for your book. The conversation is crazy, but you deserve it. Maybe the conversion is crazy. Oh, is that what it converts into for Canadian dollars? Because I'm like, $95 is not that much. It's $59. Ooh, sorry. Good. But listen, if you are doing what you're supposed to do, you will make that off of one person with a tip or at most two people. To spend that much is really nothing. We go out and we buy three, four, five, six polishes and spend that thing, nothing of it, and go out the next week and buy more glitters and polishes. So this is a business book that tells you how to get your brand off the ground and how to do it digitally and all the business resources and stuff you need to make yourself legitimate. Like, I don't really think it's crazy. Because I didn't have anything like this. And if you go on Amazon right now, go on Amazon right now and Google. Well, go on Amazon and just search. No, I get what you say. I just, it's just weird to see that number. $95 and Canadian dollars. Wow. But guess what? I Like I said earlier, people are ordering from Canada. I get Canadian orders. This is a Canadian order. I'm not trying to show the person's information. But you can see... You can see that, you see that, that code right there, that is Canadian, right? This is, you see that's a customs declaration. People are ordering from Canada. I don't know, I'm reaching people. I have people all over in Iceland, um, over in Africa, everywhere. Jamaica, the Virgin Islands, everywhere. So, um, I get what you're saying, but it's crazy to hear that number from someone. I'm like, wow, but... You guys, like, you can have the life you want. Do what you want. I just came off a seven-day cruise. I've already started paying on Jamaica. I'm thinking about driving to Atlanta for the holidays because I'm tired of eating and doing the same old thing because they sit around and do nothing. Um, I got some friends talking about going to Vegas for the new year, which they do every year. We'll see. Um, thinking about having me a little surgery procedure to suck in his stomach. I mean, like, we'll see. I mean, I do what I want to do. The world is my oyster because I control my destiny, my time, and how much I want to make. You know why? Because I'm not afraid to be on either side of the fence to make money. See, somebody trying to send me a message right now on Instagram. And when I log off of here, whoever said they just ordered a book, that order going to come through and probably a couple more orders. This is the life you want. You want to go through the fire, but once you go through that fire, it'll be the blessings will be overwhelming. I'm not saying I'm balling, but I'm saying I see it working. <sighs> For now, I'm be, okay, so you're going to look back and say you did that. I said 36 months, we'll be on stage somewhere. I've already started looking into shows. To see, because people are like, when are you going to speak at shows? Da, 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 da. And you know me, I'm not going to do it just regular schmack like. If you attended the um, launch parties, you already know. When I did the Halloween thing, turning out the lights and spinning around and doing a game show and all of that, you're going to know that if I come on stage with it, it's going to be a whole production, honey. Trust and believe. Phenom D said, I sublease. It's just me now, but I am a cosmetologist. Okay. I had a suite. It wasn't working there. And I had to sleep. What? What did it say? I had to sleep on couches and sitting up all night outside on a bench all night. But someone who helped me out with the commercial space, he wasn't using. So he offered it to me. It's a hole in the wall. But things change when I move. So I stay here and I work here and needing help. That's running a little bit. You all thought I was crying. I'm not crying because this is what it takes. I want you all to see that there are people that are willing to go that mile. And it's not just me just talking shit out my neck. This girl really wants her dream. I'm loving it. 
Da, 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 da. Okay. Looking for help and there's space here for others. But for my travel, I have been contracting help for some of the mobile work. So it's going. Phnom D, what city are you in? What city are you in? Hey, London. What is that girl's name in, 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 in North Carolina? She's very, very popular. What is that girl's name? I know somebody can help her out. That girl is in Durham, uh, North Carolina. She just had a car accident not too long ago. She just recovered. She just came back into working who can help her out she's in charlotte one of the most popular nail techs in the united states is right there and she's very open and very helpful what is her name kiki you need to connect with kiki's creations you phenom d you need to connect with uh, Kiki's Creations. I need you to drive on up if you have to. Get some gas money if you have to. If you gotta do some cash out me on Facebook, give me $10, $20. Do what you gotta do. Fuck what people think. Do what you gotta do if you gotta get $100 from people, cash out, whatever. Drive. If Kiki won't talk to you, if you feel like you need to talk to a person, go talk to Kiki. Kiki has a following. Kiki has um, Kiki has uh Influence, that's the word I'm looking for. And Kiki can probably refer some people to you in the area because I know for a fact, because you all are in the same state, that she's going to have a lot of nail techs in North Carolina already following her. And so what you need to do is just get those people in. Don't try to price gouge them, okay? If they come and you get some people that's willing to work with you no matter what's going on with them, work with them and be very be a blessing to them because it may take some baby steps in the beginning okay so i'm gonna need you to connect with kiki on tell her your real situation tell her how you met me through my page and i suggested you two link up you know and she may give you some suggestions she may give you a shout out any way she can help you sometimes in order to grow we gotta be humble and so your story touches me so I, that's what I want you to do. I want you to come back in and check with me. I've never met Kiki before. I lived in, in North Carolina before I lived in Raleigh. But I know she sticks out in Raleigh, in that area, Raleigh-Durham area. And you're in Charlotte. You're not too far from each other, about an hour and 45 minutes away from each other. And so you need to link with her. And she, if she can't do anything, she can still give you a shout out to reach out to you. And, and you take things from there. And if you get some people that want to reach out, don't be trying to charge them this full booth rent knowledge, trying to make money right away. Just take baby steps and be humble and whatever it is, because those people, although they may not pay your bills right away for you, they can be some sort of financial help, but they may be blessings to you in the other ways that you don't see yet. That's all I can say to you right now, because what's coming to me about this is something else is brewing. I don't know what else it is, but that's the message I'm supposed to give to you right now. So that's what I need you to do. That's all we can do with it right now. But you're doing the right thing. And trust me, I've been there. And, and trust me, if you look at my, man, if I turn this cabinet around right now, I still have ramen noodles in my cabinet. I have chicken. I have the, um, let me show you which ones I like. Look, let me tell you something. 
so so many people too damn proud. That's why they don't get a head because they too comfortable in their little fake bougie life. I still eat these picante chicken flavor ramen noodles. I love these. These are my favorite. These got me through. When I was trying, let me tell you a little quick story. I was trying to buy a building. I was working at Walgreens. I was making okay money, like 50 some, maybe six, close 60,000 a year, but I was working my ass off for that little money. And um, I was trying to buy a building and I was saving every penny. My credit was in the toilet. And um, I was trying to fix my own credit, so I, I took all my bills, I wrote them down, and I went from the smallest bill up to the highest bill, and I paid all my bills down. But how did I do that? I worked my ass off. I ain't had no social life. I ain't talked to nobody. I ain't comb my hair. I ain't do shit. All I did was work, 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 come home, had me a couple of shots of Jack Daniels. I'm not going to lie to you. I had a couple of shots. Sorry, not Jack Daniels. I had a couple of shots of E&J, Irk and Jerk. Go to sleep, get up, do it all over again. I did that for seven months, I think, straight. And I got my building. I was a building owner. I went from eating fucking ramen noodles to being a landlord and had tenants paying me rent. Okay? Y'all don't understand. When I have people with these sob stories, you forgive me if I don't tear up. Because I done been through it all. Don't let this fake ass hair and all this makeup fool you. I went from eating ramen noodles to being a landlord within seven months of just being disciplined. So when I hear that this girl is living in her business and she don't have nobody, it's just her, she's on this live listening. Y'all not gonna make me get emotional. I'm telling you to talk to Kiki. That's all the information I got for you right now. Talk to Kiki and you brainstorm with her. If you gotta reach out and you gotta drive and meet her, go drive your ass up there. If you need to, we're going to come on here and we're going to do a live. And I want everybody who would be a part of this to come and say yay, yay, yes, one, period, whatever. We're going to get you the money. We're going to cash app it to you to get you some gas money to get up there. If you are willing, if she needs to go up there and talk to Kiki and Kiki and her going to spend a day together so she needs some gas money, can you please come on my live and say yes, period, nay, you're going to get $3, $5, $6, $10, something to help this fellow nail tech meet up with another nail tech. Can you please tell me that? I'm just, I'm just asking. I say yay. You got, of course, from Curly Curly Crew. You got, of course, from me. You got Tania say yay. You got London say, whoo, yay. Curly Crew say yay. Whoo, TW Design say yay. Come on, talk to her. Tell her, Sharia's nail say yeah. We got your gas money, honey. If you need to go talk to her or whatever, we're going to help you get past this hurdle. Okay? I still, I still keep picante chicken ramen noodles in my cabinet. I don't even eat them, but I, if I, I keep them. I don't know why. They good, actually. <laughs> if you want something, you can make it happen if you're willing to go through the trenches. She's in the trenches, so let's help her out. She's going to be part of the success story in 36 months. Okay? All right. I feel like there's one more thing I need to answer. How big is that space that you're in? I'm just going to throw something depending on how you answer that, and I'm just doing free consultation here. Just doing something out there that I've seen people do in Atlanta. You could always, depending on how, you need to tell me how much that space is a month.
She need to talk to her first because she might just do it over the phone. need to know how big the space is you know all that good stuff because Kiki might even give you a shout out okay I'm not sure it's six stations or so can fit in here it's 600 I knew he was gonna say 700 I knew he was gonna say a low price 700 so you're coming up with like 175 a week yeah, 175 a week just to be there. But 175 a week, let's break this down. 175 a week is still covering your housing and your business. So it's not an undoable thing. Um <clears throat> you just need to brand yourself all the way and just keep pushing forward. There are more details that need to be known, but you're just going to have to keep pushing forward. I'm glad you just said all this, and I really appreciate you being so honest and transparent here on YouTube because this is the public. And because this is what I'm talking about. This is what real entrepreneurs may have to go through sometimes. And most people are not ready to do that. What's she going through? What I've been through? You see, I still got ramen noodles. I got shrimp down here throwing, throwing out the point of salad. But I still, I'm always, my man always ready to go where it need to go. I still got ramen noodles stacked up in my in my cabinet in case I need to go there a week or two. Everybody not ready to do that. But she fine because she's, she don't have no astronomical rent that she can't ever make at any time. $175 a week, she can go out and make that on Uber if she wanted to. Phenom D, your work is great. The way you lay frontals is amazing. You do hair too. You do hair. She said, I do everything in here. I do hair, do nails, do makeup. That's, I need help. Yes, I just checked the IG. Maybe I should fly there for the holiday. Charlotte. Charlotte is four hours for from Atlanta. But driving from Charlotte to Chicago would be kicking my ass. Oh. Can you email me at Chicago at Yahoo? You'll be in Michigan in two weeks. Okay. What part? Detroit? Flint? Email me when you get, well, email me and then tell me what your plans are. So maybe we can meet somewhere. We can come to a middle ground and figure this thing on out here. Oh, Detroit. Yeah, we can figure something out here. Definitely, because that I like your grind, girl. Yes, especially if you're doing hair. Girl, you could do one person hair and pay your rent. Look at your rent in weekly increments. $175 a week. You could do one person to make that. But, like I tell everybody, you can make whatever money you want to make as long as your brand reflects that. And I think people get overwhelmed because it's like, oh, I got to be fancy. I got to have all this stuff like people on YouTube, like Ming Lee and all that. And, and and just being the person I am and knowing what I know, I look at a lot of stuff that people have on Instagram. I'm like, that ain't cost nothing. That's just angles, camera angles and filters. That shit is cheap as hell. So, okay, this is real talk. Okay. Chicago at Yahoo.com. Are there any other questions? I want to 
want to know why I'm not hearing anything from these people who have bought this book. There should be some questions. I'm, I'm going to be asking you all questions. I'm assuming that you all are not doing these weekly assignments. What is this? Anyone who has the book in here, what does it have you thinking? We've been on here almost three hours. Oh, London, now you want to come pick up the book. And you got a, a cape here. Um, Just text me. It varies day to day. I would say mid-afternoon is the best time to reach me. The beginning of the week, like Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What are your thoughts on the cost of nail supplies? You was waiting on me to come back. That's true. I, I've been back a week. Saturday made a week. I've been back a week. Um, but I'm trying to get out of town again. <laughs> um, the cost of nail supplies is not to be overwhelming. You have to take the cost of nail supplies week by week. Oh, my girl just said she just heading out. I guess I should get dressed. Well, my face is already done. Bling, so I need to change clothes, huh? I think this will look okay in nightlight. What you think? What you guys think? I think this would be cute in the motorcycle club. Yeah. What you say your name is? Anyway, the cost of nail supplies should not be overwhelming. Thank you. Um, take it week by week, and it, I've said it in some other lives. Every week, just say how much you're going to buy. This week, I'm going to buy three gel. That's why I like D&D, &D, because you can say I'm going to buy three gel kits. But it comes with a gel and a polish. So you're going to get three gels, three polishes for, you know, $21. If you got 100 bucks to spend, you can get, what, 12 So I'm going to buy a dozen gel kits. So you're going to get a dozen colors every week. By the end of the month, you'll have 48 new gels, 48 new polishes. So I suggest that people take things week by week. And also, like I said, mid-video, if you have some things that you want me to place a bundle personalized order for you for let me know you got to be specific now i will find those items and i will place a personalized order for you on my site and you can go ahead and order and purchase and put it on afterpay and put it into four payments so you can go ahead and get your inventory together what do you think of salon owners having new text in the salon by themselves From a nail supplier's perspective, the markup, etc. I don't think any of anything of it is, is the cost of doing business. People make money off of people. People make money off of me. I make money off of people. You make money off of clients. The employer makes money off of you. Everybody make money off of everybody. That's the cost of doing business. I don't think too deep into it. I just figure out how much my overhead what that cap is and how much profit I want to make, but I don't think too much about what the next man is doing. I'm just thinking about what fits into my numbers. So I don't know if that makes sense or if I answered your question, but that's as deep as I think on it. Yeah. <laughs> you email me, cool. Now tonight I'm not gonna look at it because I'm I need to go outside. My friend just texted me and said I'm about to leave out. I don't even know what time it is. I'm assuming it's eleven o'clock. So, yeah. What do you think of salon owners having new nail techs in the salon by themselves? What do you mean? What do you mean by themselves? Like opening and running it the whole day.
Hmm. <laughs> Am I stalling because I'm hungry? Hold on. Okay, so I personally understand that from two different angles. First angle is from the nail text angle. The nail tech is like, oh, you got me here, and I'm sitting up here working the salon, and you got me ringing up people, and you got me doing all this stuff, and you ain't even here, or whatever. Right? The other side of it is, you know what to do. Go ahead and ring up your own clients. I trust you to do so. And I got other things I'm trying to take care of. I'm out here marketing, trying to get more business, or I'm taking care of other things. Why should I have to sit here and look at you, do what you already know how to do already? I'm just telling you as a salon, previous nail salon owner. <sighs> I personally think, and maybe I'm biased, because I am a previous salon owner, that nail techs are concerned with the wrong thing. Because I had a nail tech say that to me before. And it's so funny because that one nail tech who said that is a habitual salon hopper. Because she constantly finds reasons to have an issue and a problem. Constantly. Why are you complaining about ringing up your own clients? If I have to hire an assistant, can I afford to keep paying you what I'm paying you? If I'm paying you 50%, now you want me to hire an assistant and pay them 40 hours a week. So now you're going to take 45% because they got to be paid to sit there and stand there all day to uh, wait around till you're done to ring them up when you already know how to run the cash register. It ain't nothing but hit this button, hit this button, collect the money. It's a camera watching. If it's For me, if it's a camera watching what you're doing, why can't you just ring yourself up? And going about your day, you got more freedom. I'm not hovering over you. It's like with salon owners, we have issues too because it's like we can't win for losing. We, you want to be paid all this money. We're trying to pay you the maximum amount that we can afford to pay you. Yet you want all these amenities and stuff that's going to cut into how much we can afford to pay you. You all forget about the overhead, especially in a commission situation because we are supplying all your supplies. We're paying all these utilities plus the rent, plus marketing to keep you busy. And on top of that, you want a receptionist. And if it's not always that busy, why do you want us to pay a person to sit there to wait for you and watch you work just to ring you up when you know how to do it yourself? You're asking for a business to push yourself towards closing. It's not a big deal. If it's a camera right there watching you, we feel safe enough to have you touch the register instead of looking at it as you're doing so much because you're not doing shit really but hitting some buttons on the register, to be honest. Let's have some real talk here. You ain't doing nothing but hitting nothing on the register. Instead of looking at it from a negative standpoint, you're doing so much work. You're not really doing that much work at all. You're hitting some buttons on the register. Hit the number of your service and your name, $20, your name, Hit the cash button, hit the cash register button, swipe their damn card and give them their receipt. What is the problem with that? It's like sometimes people find a reason to me to have an issue. And the problem that people don't understand when it comes to owning a small business is that we are trying to keep our overhead low. So you can make money and so we can make money. So if there are certain things that you can just do real quick or certain things that I can do real quick, then why not do them? Because there are certain liberties that you have that you will not have at a corporate salon. You can go work at a corporate salon, which I've done it all, and you will have cashiers, but you're not going to be paid as much. The commission is much lower. The rent is going to be, I'm sorry, not the rent. The rules are going to be much stricter. You get what I'm saying? So there's always a give and take. And so from being on all sides of the fence, working at corporate, working as a salon owner, a real salon, big salon, major salon owner, um, being a nail tech in corporate, in spa, in the hood, everywhere. I could tell you that sometimes we're making a big deal out of things that are not that big of a deal. Just go ring the damn people up. 
be glad the person trusts you enough to trust to trust you with their register and keep it moving. They they try to they try to keep the overhead as low as possible. If you're being paid fairly, be glad you're being paid that fairly because if they hire an assistant or they hire somebody to come in 40, 50 hours a week, that's less they're going to be able to pay you. That's the least likely you're going to be given a raise in a year when you ask for a percentage raise because you got to have this assistant to ring you up. So I think that that's minute or a minute thing to like complain about. It's like not a big deal. And I think that maybe people should focus their energy on other stuff because that's not a big deal. In my salon, people ring themselves up. Whoever, whoever was at the register will ring the, everybody up. I trained everyone on the register. I trusted everyone at the register. I never had a problem with my register. Everybody knew how to ring everybody up. Whoever happened to be standing at the register at the time was the person who rung. I ring your stuff up. I ring my stuff up. It don't matter. If I Even if I'm on the floor working, if one of the girls is at the register and I'm getting the next person ready, we worked as a team, and it's like, well, it was a ticket. I just come hand you the ticket, and I go take care of the next person. You're going to ring it up for me, and you're going to try to sell them some retail too. So I feel that people, once again, asking for things they're not ready for. As an entrepreneur is trying to grow, as an entrepreneur, you got to learn teamwork. You got to learn what to make a big fuss out of, when not to make a big fuss. And that, that, that question really rings a bell with me with people who would nitpick with little silly stuff like that. And it's like, that's not even a big deal. Like, who cares who rings who up? I don't mind... The work, I do all the same things. There are a lot of mentally unwell people who linger around. I just find safety in numbers, okay? Let's say the owner was a bit was habitual about leaving and being gone all day, leaving us with the POS system that was ran through an app that didn't capture gift. That didn't capture gift cards correctly. Discounts were taken off. Our services, we had knowledge of. Mm. That's a specific situation. All I can say is, as a whole, I don't see a, a problem with people ringing themselves up. And especially in a smaller base business, it, it's what keeps the overhead low. If there are specific problems, then I would ask the manager to have a meeting. And address your concerns. But understand if you ask that salon owner to hire a receptionist, it's gonna affect your money. It's gonna affect your money. Address the concerns and see how it needs to be fixed. There may be an update to the software or something like that. Don't ask that salon owner to start spending a whole bunch of money. You gonna be the one to suffer. Ask for a meeting. Address your concerns. Don't sit up there and talk about it with other nail techs because they will stab your ass in the back. <laughs> Ask for a meeting. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Say what you gotta say. Look, what's wrong with your damn software? It don't work. I want you to think I'm stealing from you, so you better fix the software if you want me to be using your register. Your software don't work right. I don't feel comfortable handling your money because your software don't work right. You need to come up and handle your own money. What you want me to say? These chops are on this. So good. I told y'all when you get a certain level of freedom, you don't care. I'm just gonna feel my leg kicked up and everything. What you want me to say? That's that's how we handle it. Don't start making this a lot. Spend more money though, because you're gonna feel it. If your check is not affected, then oh well. What 
else I'm supposed to say? I ate the whole bag. Shoot a dinosaur's tooth right there. It was good though. <laughs> Chut on this. Mm. So I'm supposed to be going outside right now, and it's like going on three hours, and maybe three hours. So I didn't even know what I was gonna talk about tonight, you guys. That's so funny because a lot of times when I go online, I'm like, oh my god, what am I gonna talk about? I'm so nervous. I'm gonna be sitting there looking like crickets and looking like a dumbass. But shit, it's like, I almost be like, oh my God, I keep talking. It's like, I run out. I, it never stops. It's never, I, I think I have so much experience, 30, 30 years experience. I don't think I ever found out. I don't think I ever run out of stuff to talk about. So let me go outside and have some fun, you guys. Cause my makeup is all oxidized now. And my wig has blended. And this is the same wig from the strip. It is all blended. YouTube will not capture none of those pictures. I promise you. <laughs> so I'm going to catch you all in the next video. Okay? All right. Good night.